our very lives. She is absolutely precious, and uh -huh. we protect her with our very lives. The only danger is that there might be other characters that we want to protect as much oh. with our very lives oh. that are as precious. Uh, hmm. Definitely on. And, and Negamine may be threatened by them. No! <laughs> that's terrible! <laughs> that's an awful thing to happen, John. Poor Megamine. Poor yeah, Megamine. That's okay. I'll take her. It's fine. There you go. Go and pop up check. All right, I got my whole uh -huh. media spreadsheet up. Oh, oh, a spreadsheet. Oh, no, no, it's my normal. It's my normal. Your thing normal. I, I pull oh. up just like, mm. uh, my ah, media yeah. spreadsheet was my anime list. How's it going, Tingu? <laughs> Welcome. Glad to see you. There's a chat room you can go to. I don't think oh, really. Yeah, I don't think Rhett ever opens the chat. No, <laughs> I think that's his thing. It's just I'll remain blissfully aware of the people that got us here. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you're just like, it's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, but, like, Rhett's like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do. I was gonna spin off into a joke about Rhett being like a. a like a snooty rock star. <laughs> I mean, like, eh. of, of, all, of all of the three of us that I feel would end up being like that, it would, that would end up with a big case of lead singer syndrome. It's definitely it's Rhett. It's, it's definitely, definitely me. Don. It's definitely yeah, me. Probably. like the They're big already. John being the big prima donna. He needs that. He needs his 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 tea colonics before. I would every be the episode. reckless for sure. As soon as I get famous, I'd be like, I'm out. I mean, that would be me too. Yeah. No, I'd We're, be like, I would, I would be deep in it. I'd just be like, "Hello, everybody." <laughs> My adoring, yeah, I would get, I would get a really big head. Mm -hmm. I name search for the first time in like oh seven my god, years. what are you doing? It was the worst. What were you? I found like searching? one guy. Oh. I found like one, one person on a Brazilian games forum talking about my games, and I was like, "Yes, nailed it! You finally made it." Yes, that was the only thing I found with like a I don't, deep comb. I don't ever want to know what anybody's saying about anything I've ever done. Like I just mm. keep that shit. Like I just remain blissfully unaware. If anybody mm. ever tries to tell me, I mentally block it out. They're like whatever, I don't care. Y'all can keep that. There you go. That's probably it's, the healthy way to do it. It's so weird for me because there are so many LPs of press space to win on oh YouTube. yeah yeah <laughs> oh my god i got monty to play that today oh, oh wow that's uh we're that's... Just <laughs> there's just a... the faces they just slowly realize like what the game was <laughs> <laughs> that's <good>. beautiful <laughs> god there's a super press space to win action rpg any percent speed run from two weeks ago oh my god like it's still continuing on how does it, have, does it have a board on speedrun.com? Yes, it does. Your game, you have a game that has a speedrun, that has its own speedrun board. It fucking I, shouldn't. I speedran John's Frog game and literally could not get a board approved. Like, they just, know, they turned it down. To do with this. They turned it down. I, I tried to submit Frog, I tried to submit Frog Adventure and they were like, we don't want it. I tweeted it just... So you can see, it's, <laughs> it literally shouldn't exist though because it's the dumbest thing to exist. Because there is a perfect run. And yeah, it's literally holding space. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, there, like anybody can get the world record in Home Alone on NES because all you got to do is do the same glitch and like the game, the yeah. game has a time limit. So the game ends on the time limit. So you always get world mm -hmm. record. You just have to play the game for two minutes, park yourself, and then wait for the timer <laughs> to go. So like a bunch of people have the Home Alone world record on NES. Yeah. Oh, Cedron.com. We're too good for a frog game. Mm -hmm. yeah, apparently, this was like, this was back when I did it too. Like back when I originally did it, and that was what like three or four years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Okay, this is the funniest thing on the speed speedrun.com for super press space to win most of them say platform web because it was a web game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the recent editions ones from two months ago ones from four months oh. ago they say web emulated because they have to technically emulate flash oh now. yeah <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I was trying to play it earlier, and I was like, "It's the one on inconsequential existence doesn't work." And then I realized, "Oh, Newgrounds emulates everything." 
I, yeah. For a second, I was like, do I need oh. to download Flashpoint, all 800 gigs of Flashpoint? <laughs> oh my god! Um, and then, nope. I should. I don't know what to do with my website right now. Yeah, it's you are. Right, that, yeah. that, 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 that gambit of doing an entire, you know, website and having an entire online presence defined by Flash back in 1999, boy, oh boy, that turned out real weird 20 years later. And then, and then, 15 years later, defining your entire web presence in Tumblr. In Tumblr! Uh, I think that was almost the worst move. That's, yeah, that might actually be <laughs> the worst. Because right now, the... Wow, the Tumblr page is really fucking broken. Oh, they're so ugly now, aren't they? Like, I went to your website just a couple weeks ago to play some things, and it was like, oh, God, this is, wow, this is poop from a butt ugly. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I think it's just the Tumblr front page, like, the hot linking isn't working, so mm. it's, it's just an ugly mess right now. I'll fix that someday. Yeah. I don't know. You need to get those simpler games re-exported as XE files, right? I know. But at least, like... Right, how am I going to stream the adventures of Mike Man 2? You have to think of me here. I'll oh, do got, that one got, just for you I tonight. Got right. um, I got Bonte to play some Bullet Phase 2, and I saw the person on the Bullet Phase page said, Hi, Red, you could make your game downloadable. The Flash support will end. In I did. <laughs> it did finally then, make it downloadable. And then a reply, Seriously, please. Oh. The Flash support will end very soon. Oh. <laughs> I did that one like day of. All the uh, itch.io ones should have downloads now. Yeah, I think they do. But there's only like hunters uh, and. Yeah, just hunters and. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the ones on Newgrounds are still playable. Mm -hmm. I think they said like Hunters Stage 6 doesn't work in the emulator. I'm like, oh, cool. Ooh. The oh. important one. Yeah, like the, the biggest, most important one. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. Uh, you, did, you did push Flash 4. As hard Pretty as it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, wait, didn't, wasn't Hunters exported in Flash 5, oh, yeah. though? I wasn't exporting in Flash 4 mm -hmm. by the end, since, like, because you couldn't do actual keyboard input no, on Flash 4. No, not like, you could, but you can't do multi-key input. Yeah. That's why my, That's why the original versions of Mike Man were kind of bad. <laughs> were and, hilarious. And, you, and you refused to listen to anybody about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't have a way to fix it. I know, time. I know, but you were just, it was, the the way, the, just the way you approached it back then was very funny. I was very proud I'd made it. You had made a great it game. Even, it was not unplayable because I finished it multiple times even with bad controls, okay? So, I still, oh. I still, like, I played that game on yeah. the reg, so. But John being, like going into the, the later version with the fixed controls and being like, why are these five seconds like five seconds long? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, you don't understand the original version was an ordeal to move. Yeah. <laughs> like, instead of just holding down the button, you basically had to tap for every single pixel. Yeah, you, just you were like nightmare. <laughs> you were like doing these weird adjustments midair, kind of just pixel by pixel, tap by tap. Like, job. to jump forward, you would jump and then tap forward a bunch. So that's, that's why the gaps are, like, extremely small. <laughs> <laughs> and then you and then you redid it, and it's just, like, put everything up times two speed. And yeah. And it's really fun. And it's really, yeah, it, it's such a wildly different game <laughs> than it was when it first launched. It really is, like, a, an entirely different game. The weirdest part... Uh, I'll stop this tangent after this, but like in the in the faster version, every boss also has half health. Yeah, they have half health now, which means in the original version, everything had double health. Yeah, they just took forever. They took forever. <laughs> we make look. We make very good video games, and I will not hear a word otherwise. Welcome everyone to Soxcast episode one hundred and forty-four. We make the video games. You play them. You love them. Right? That's how that goes. That's how this, this whole thing... Actually, that's not true. Indie devs don't like playing other indie devs' video <laughs> games. You learn that real fast. <laughs> you would be surprised the number of indie devs that I talk to that want me to play oh, their game, but suddenly do not have time for my video game. Oh, I'm, I'm very busy. I won't have the time. I'm thinking of that meme image, the comic with the dog. Play my game. Not your game, Not my game. Not your game, my game. 
Uh, I'm not bitter. I promise. <laughs> if I if I if I voice too much bitterness, I get I, it consumes me. So I just don't. Yeah, you kind of gotta. Yeah, just like all right, I need to pull myself out of this little acid puddle right now, or we're gonna go down mm. on a tangent that is the not Liam Gallagher. <laughs> oh tangent, no, as yeah, said. Liam Gallagher tangent. That's pretty good. Uh, but hey, how's everybody doing out there in internet land? We hope you're ready for a podcast. We're ready for one. It's been a couple weeks. Can you believe that, like, after next episode, the episode after that, we're going to be asking for Game of the Year lists? Oh, oh, man. I don't even know what mine is at this point. Like, I, I, hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? what? I wrote one already. You. <laughs> oh, look at you. I'll make adjustments as needed, but I'm real happy with it. You're just like, huh. your boy just got his homework done three three months early. He doesn't even have to think about this shit. He's just oh, real I'm confident. So He's just real confident. I was just, I was just like, wow, I've got 27 games beaten this year. That's a record low. And Polly's like, I got, I got, it. I got, I got 18. Okay, <laughs> one more. All right, let me, let me, y'all keep talking. I'll count mine up. All right. <laughs> it will see. I I don't count. 30 minute games obviously because I, I don't mean, play yeah. any because <laughs> those are, I mean those are indie games and we know that those aren't real games yeah they're not real no I mean if I can't go on Steam I actually <laughs> unironically because I've got so few games played this year I probably should actually put Luigi floating on an egg over the sea in contention <laughs> <laughs> just because like hey if I if I've liked only nine games more it's got a chance. It's got, it's got, you know what? The shot is ever so minimal. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, 51 on my list. 51. Oh my Look at you. How many of those That's... are like five minute flicker games? Um, <laughs> a, a decent number, but. Okay, a number so you basically are... played 12 games this year. Honestly, honestly, there should be far more itch games on here. I feel like I've been, I feel like I've been lax. Mm. So mm. we'll punch that up. Mm. It is funny when it's like. Oh, I could play one Trails in the Sky game, or like a thousand indie games. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay in between long RPG mode for a little bit because it's very easy to jump right into another one. Yes, um, like, it when is. I, when, I, when I don't, then I, then my brain is like, okay, let's do these twelve other things instead, and it's really yeah. nice, like, even I, in just like that week or two week period. Like I got that copy of Mary Skelter Finale. And I was like looking at, as like I, I immediately, like I just finished two, like two weeks ago, but then I got like as soon as I got it in my hands, it was like that immediate urge, like oh man, I could like put this in and I could just go right now because this is like fucking candy from my brain, filling in all those squares, <laughs> doing random battles, like there's the, like like dungeon RPGs, but then like. I guess I can play the. I guess I can play the cute little visual novel that comes with it. The the, the dating game. Yes. Because that looked real wild. The couple seconds I looked at, of it, that I was like, okay, I got like two screens into that, and then like a couple of nightmares appear as Jack's parents. And I was like, okay, this might actually be really doofy and fantastic. Yes. Oh my god, I love the 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 scope of that package. It, when you kind of so laid out much. what the Mary Skelter finale looks like, I, that feels so like. Like, they love their story and world that, so much. That that's the happy. thing, is I think that really I kind of appreciate about the series a lot, even if, like, the gameplay might not be, you know, like, what I typically expect and want in a dungeon crawler with a bit more meat and a little more a bit more thought. It's just, like, they care so much about that narrative and story and characters that, like, they're including literally everything with finales so you don't miss out so nice that that's rules so, cool. so much yeah like it, it th like that kind of dedication to story is just not what i come to expect with that genre typically no uh, but okay. anyway i did yeah i did count up my i did count up my itch rex uh -huh. for 20 so like 2020 i had 28 games that i really liked mm -hmm. and i've only got 11 so far for 2021 oh, you slack so I'm, I'm, now. I'm very behind on itch stuff mm -hmm. Ugh. Well, you got a few months. You still got a few months to get things okay. in there. I got Pad it. that list okay. out a little bit. Look for, look for some games about people in a coma. You'll find plenty. Don't worry. <laughs> to my immediate virtual right, he's ready, <laughs> willing, and able to be an outlet for your daddy issues. Oh, no. It's Red. It's John Thayer. It's Red. <laughs> Who's got daddy issues in chat? Cox out for daddy issues. Let's go. Oh. What is going on? What is going on, Rat? 
Not much. Playing <laughs> playing a video game for once. You are playing a video game, are you? Yeah, we're not going to talk about we're, that much. We'll probably <laughs> hit that at the end, because I, yeah. I figure people know what we're talking about. And me and Red have played a, a good bit of it so far, but we'll save that for, like, the last segment or something. Mm-hmm. That way, you know. And we're not going to spoil anything, obviously, so... That would be rude. That'd be rude seeing as that the game is only two days old. We Samus could... is a girl. Samus is a girl. Uh, oh yeah. my god. Oh shit. I yeah. fucked up. Shit. Well, don't worry, I'll fix it in post. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'll put like Samus is a <laughs> They'll never figure it out. They'll, never. they'll be really curious though. Yeah, then they'll have to buy the game. Oh, but then we are Nintendo's money. best marketing arm, I tell you. I yeah, tell we're you. not going to tell you to pirate it. I'm not going to tell you to pirate it. Even we're just going to say that I don't it runs give, well in an emulator. Even though I don't give a flying fuck about pirating Nintendo games. Hey, did you know you can run it at 4K with unlimited <laughs> frame rate? That's pretty wild. <laughs> That's a pretty wild article. I think that people kind of misunderstood the reason that I was po- po- poking fun at the thing that I was poking fun at. I was just poking fun at the the, the guy completely just com- completely missed the context of his own quote, yeah. <laughs> and it was really dumb sounding. Um, but anyway, but you're ready for a podcast, right? I guess. I don't know that anybody's <laughs> taking you up on the daddy issues offer either. Uh, oh, thank Rhett, God. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> uh, if you want, get a hold of me at Polly at socksmakepeoplesexy dot net. If you've got daddy issues, I will forward them over to Rhett. <laughs> And he will get you covered. Don't you worry. What does that mean? What does that mean? Podcast at SocksMakePeopleSexy.net with the no, subject no. line... Actually, those emails go to me. With the subject line, Daddy Issues. Red will get you all fixed up. Don't you worry. Technically, I, I get the podcast emails first. Yeah, you do. Why do you think I use that email? God damn it. It's okay. Nobody listens to this show. Hey, John, right what here. was that email again? <laughs> Whoa! No, I great. can't. Not now, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> That's a callback. That's a goddamn good callback. Man, you gotta know you gotta know the Sox cast deep lore for that one. You have to have been listening a while to get that joke. That jape. To my immediate virtual left, he just can't stop thinking about semen today. It's John Thayer. Oh, that's a mood. Hi! Hey! How's it going? Doing well. Doing well. Got some good stuff to talk about. I'm yeah. excited. Is it semen based? Uh, arguably. Arguably. Oh, we're talking about that Dreamcast hit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we like fish here. It's fine. Mm. It's good. You're ready for a podcast. You all, you're always ready for a podcast, though. I don't know why I always asked you. Always ready for you a just, podcast. You're just always ready. Like, I could call you up at, like, Three in the morning, and you'd be I'd like, John, let's do a three a.m. podcast. And you'd be like, dude, hell yeah, let's go. Fuck yeah, that shit going. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, actually so maybe not on a work night. I'm gonna actually yeah, do that. I'm gonna actually do that at some point now. That's gonna be something fun for you to watch out for in the future. Is uh, me doing a surprise two a.m. stream and then just calling you in the middle of the night. Let I me... absolutely keep my phone muted at night. Oh, <laughs> that's no fun. If that's, somebody, if somebody's, if somebody's dead, I can find out in the morning. I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. You know what? Like nobody wants a call in the middle of the night. Those are the worst. Like if somebody's calling you at two in the morning, it's either a prank call or somebody died. You don't want those calls. It's fine. <laughs> I faced the day, but look, look. If somebody's dead, I'm gonna face that day a whole lot better in the morning. You tell me that when I've uh. got to look at you through two bloodshot eyes and be like, oh, okay. Let me take a few minutes to process the words that you came out of your mouth. And two hours later, you're at work and go, oh, dead. Oh, that's a state of non-existence. Oh. Yeah, I handled that not very well, did I? Oh, God. Yeah. And it's just a whole weird... Not that this has ever happened. Not that really this has ever... really enjoying the energy this episode. <laughs> There's a good energy. I'm going first! Okay. Hell yeah. Look at me go. Look at me go. Taking command of my own show. It's Taking not, command it, of your own destiny. Yeah. It's, Seizing it's, your own to- fate in your own two oh hands. Boy. Oh, boy. John. Not your bit. What? Wally's turn. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, go, Polly. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Doing <laughs> well. What have you been up to, Polly? Oh, I've been up to some things. You know, things and stuff. Stuff and things. Mm-hmm. I played a uh, I played a cool demo the other day. I thought I might bring up just to sort of oh, have a quick, quick one off. Uh, I streamed it. 
And it might surprise it might surprise people that I enjoyed it, <laughs> given the company that's behind it. I pl- I played a demo. Oh. I played a demo for the new Skipmore game, uh, Transa Ooh. Ruby. Oh, I'm so chest for this. Yeah, uh, fill me in. Okay, Transa Ruby is basically an, like a, an explorey type platformer game uh kind of <laughs> like kind of like those ones that started coming out in like 1985 you know the one oh we're you, not you, that old we're not we're not no like we were all born in what like 2003 or so four. Is, it, is it like legacy <laughs> is it wait are you saying it's like legacy of the wizard basically yeah i mean okay. it could literally just be like they literally just yeah trans ruby literally translates to legacy of the wizard in russian Look it up. I'm not lying. Go to Google Translate. I'm not the one making this shit up. But um, yeah, it's a new. It's a cute little exploratory platformer uh, by mm-hmm. the, by the Skipmore fellows. They make really simple, easy to play games where you know, not a lot of not a lot of heavy um, interaction required. So I was kind of curious as to how that they would approach uh, something a little more involved, like a platformer. So like I an had, action game, yeah. Yeah, like, it's it's a bit more of an action game. And I think that Kamiko was also a bit more action-oriented. Um, Kamiko was. It was, like, I kind of went into it expecting something more along the scope of, like, Faerun. Mm-hmm. But then it's, like, a, it is, like, a four-stage action game. Like yeah. It's a, it's a thing. It's, like, a time trial type thing. It's ah, like a, cool. A more epic adventure. Oh, nice. Uh, so, yeah, like, so I guess that there is sort of precedent for them doing something a little more uh, action-oriented then. Uh, with Comico mm-hmm. being what it was, uh, but yeah, like this is just one of those, uh, and I'm, I don't mean that derisively. I mean that in a good way. Like this feels like a good one of those where, um, like the areas are really big and detailed and distinct. You don't like really ever feel like you would get lost in them because, like, it's, again, one of those games where like I don't need these games to be super huge. I just need them to be nice and dense, but like small and compact and and you can make everything very distinct and easy to kind of follow without having to look at a map all the time so you always kind of know where you're at in the world but you go around and you have to like open these gates with these little diamonds that you find scattered all over the place and it basically comes down to being like little um uh maneuverability slash mobility puzzles on and traversal puzzles on getting all of the little diamonds so you can go to the next area probably fight a boss with some real simple mechanics and you get stuff like you get a gun like the first power up you get is gun but um, okay its primary uh function is to freeze enemies so you can like freeze enemies and hop on them, like or freeze them to like avoid. Like I, I like one cool one I saw like during during the boss fight in the demo was that like it rears up to do this like one hit kill laser attack and you have to like freeze an enemy and then jump on top of it uh, yes. to to avoid the attack and like like little things like that and it feels like it's just kind of like it's a game that's gonna build on those two like build on those ideas in a really fun way. Uh, the trailer, like, after you beat the demo, which the demo is really fucking chunky, by the way, so it makes me wonder, Oof. it makes me wonder how long the actual game is going to be, because I got about 50 minutes out of the demo, um, <laughs> and, and it's like, it's like two big areas, uh, and a boss mm-hmm. fight, so it makes me wonder just how big that game is going to be, um, uh, in the end, um, if there's, if there's like some typical skip more stuff, there's a lot of fantasy walls. I feel that they're telegraphed maybe a little bit better uh, than the favorite <laughs> stuff Sorry. may have been. Oh no! Please, by Sorry. all means, laugh. I, I am in. By, I am by no means sore at the fact that Faerun made me look like an idiot. Uh, it's fine. Um, that was there was just like some weird. I, I, I'm sure a lot of it was not telegraphed well, but there was one specific thing where your monitor. My wasn't monitor our... did not pick up the correct color. So like when I showed the screenshot to people, they were like, "It's right there," and I'm like, "What is right there?" And they literally had to show me a difference in the values of the colors of the pixels oh on the ground. <laughs> because for they some reason... We were just like... I thought people were just <laughs> fucking with me! But no, like, somebody had to show me there were two different values on my old monitor. Because for some reason, there was a shade of blue it just could not detect. Uh, so ra- weird. That's, That's so, so fucking still. bizarre! But I was stuck there for like an hour! An hour in a game that is literally, what, two hours? <laughs> I was so mad. The um, the, the the that the game is looking pretty chunky is really nice. Cause yeah. Like, cause like that was my kind of thing with Kamiko is like, 
I, I had it, it. It was good, but I had an image of something a lot grander, mm-hmm. and then I was very sad. And they released Farron two in twenty sixteen, and the only other thing they've been working on besides this was like a Stardew Valley like explorey type game, explorey farming game. Mm-hmm. And I just don't really care nah, about those. I got, I got nothing, nothing for those. So this is like the next thing. Like I really liked Farron. I really liked Farron two, and now this is the the next thing from them. In like five years. Yeah, this this seems like it's gonna be real. B- the demo is still on Steam, I believe. Like it was one of the only ones that didn't disappear from that big salvo of uh, demos they did uh, for a week. Because they're doing nice. that a lot now. They're they're showcasing. They're doing a lot of demo showcases as of yeah. late, which I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because you don't typically think of Steam giving much of a fuck about indies. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not saying that. It, like, look, it's a start. Like, having these themed weeks where, you know, you're highlighting these games, I have to think, has helping in some way. I found a I number mean, of games through these, so... I found Carry On through that. Yeah, like, um, it, so. uh, there's another game that I want to check out, but they didn't have a demo for it. It was, like, Assault something or other. John knows what it was. June streamed a bit of it. It looked really good. I, Sorry, I, I, got, look- I zoned out because I wanted to check on where the Witch Spring people were, oh. and apparently... Witch Spring 3, the remake, is coming out co- um, later this year in English. Oh! I was completely oh. in the dark about that. Oh. Sorry for losing focus there, but okay, that, I kind of always grouped them in my head because they were two like, mobile devs I really liked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I looked up Transruby demo, mm-hmm. or Transruby trailer, actually, mm-hmm. and I found a trailer from 2018, and it just says... Announcement trailer for Transruby on Nintendo Switch, releasing 2019. Oh, oh yeah, oh. well, I mean... You know, small so, dev, small dev team for one, and then 2020 happened. Uh-huh. That game probably went through some shit, but it feels good for it. Like I had a grand oh. time with that demo. Uh, I did a stream of it. If you want to catch it, it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, if, oh, yeah. you, if you want to just watch that and watch me actually play a, a skip more game and not get chumped out, <laughs> it's good. You know what? Like, I kind of like. You know what? I think I kind of get you guys now. I get it. I think. I understand. I know what you want from me. You want me. To, you, you you really value exploration, and I get that, and I appreciate that. There's so. the invisible column in Faerun. Okay, there's some one. of that stuff is really just. Really there's a couple of things in Faerun I think are bullshit. Like there's like a couple of parts where you actually literally just have to walk off of the fucking stage, and there's no indication for it. Yeah. I remember something like that in the last area where you had to like walk off of the fucking map, but there's no indication that you're supposed to do that. When well, you walk around the square in a circle and there's this this area you clearly can't reach and then like, oh, there's only four possible things that could be approaching this map air this map square from is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Oh, this one has a big blank dead end. Hmm. It's fine. It's fine. John, I'm gonna tell it's you fine. to shut your it's big fine. stupid mouth. It's fine. John? It's fine. John, yeah, mouth. Farron is very fun because it's like the only one of the only games I can think of where I really liked it mm-hmm. and I recommended it, mm-hmm. and like ten or so different friends played through it, mm-hmm. and nobody else liked it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. It's this just the my John game. Thing. <laughs> no wait, I think June likes it. Maybe June liked it. I, I feel like a lot of people played Faerun, and every time somebody got back to me like, "This shmup final boss is bullshit," or, oh, or see, something with the exploring. That was not definitely not my problem with it. The part no, where it actually had gameplay. No, like the, the part shmup- where the combat. Yeah. I like actually had gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the combat was literally: is your level higher than the enemy? Yeah. So fun. I want to make a game like it. I uh, yeah, I it. actually do too. So I like mm. look. Faerun has inspired me to a degree. So. Oh, people in the chat telling me I'm not as alone as I thought. You are not alone. Someone, someone in the chat, Zellas in the chat, saying I, a friend of uh, a friend of mine liked it. I haven't played it. It's like uh, okay, so we're fine. like we're like one link removed, but there are we're people getting there. out You're getting there. there. In the cosmos. There are people out like there it. that like Faerun. Imagine it. Mm-hmm. it. It's a world that I was scared to imagine, but I'm willing to let into I my put it in my t- I put it in my top 20 games of the decade. Uh, that's, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm proud of Faerun. You do you, Faerun. You just do it you. over there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
life is good. <laughs> uh, what else have you been up to? Probably? What else have I been up to? I played. I finally got to play a game that I've been waiting on to come out for a good long while. I've talked about it quite a bit. I streamed the demo. I try. I, I beat the drum for this game for a long time, and I don't think anybody gave a shit, which is fine. Uh, I played Unmetal. No, the name does not Tell ring a bell. Tell us about this. No, the name does not ring a bell to anybody, despite the fact that it I, definitely, it definitely rang a bell for me because I caught gear. that original stream. It's it's on metal gear. Yeah, yeah it, it based. Okay, okay. So this is this game. Like, and I, I think that this is where the disconnect happens. And I think it's like when you name your game on metal, you're gonna set expectations, uh, and you're probably gonna maybe alienate people in a way because they're gonna think, oh, this is just Metal Gear Solid like, but funny. Um, and that's not what this game is. Okay. Uh, okay. This game is like this game is not strictly uh, a Metal Gear Solid riff. It uses familiar elements, uh, like Jesse Fox. He is the, the the protagonist character. He is definitely a Solid Snake analog. He's talking in a gruff voice, but uh -huh. he is in no way a serious pr a human being. He is funny. He is entirely just completely unserious to a fault. Uh, he is a ridiculous person uh, that just gets things done by punching them, <laughs> by smushing random items together, uh, and literally not giving a fuck about being, you know, stopping the nuclear threat to the world. He just wants to go home. <laughs> he just wants to get out of here. He does not care. Uh, but he, but he's an action hero badass that is going to do the things that he needs to do anyway, and he's very funny about it. But this game would just not work at all. Um, if it was just a, a riff on Metal Gear Solid, but like the story's big and stupid, it escalates in a lot of the same ways that metal that a Metal Gear Solid game would, but it's never taking itself seriously, um, and it's never trying to be cheeky about not taking itself seriously. Like it's it's not too self aware. It's self aware to, enough to know that it's comedy. But it's not so self-aware that it's that annoying self-aware. It's just like, ah, remember that Metal Gear Solid thing? Ah? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, like, and the thing about the, the way this game kind of handles those things is it's never just throwing things out there for them to be a reference. Like, if there is a reference to something, there is also... The reference is part of a joke that is still funny. So even if, like, you don't understand what this thing might be referencing from a Metal Gear game or something like Contra... It's still funny because there's an innate absurdness to everything that's happening and these characters and the way everybody's interact. Like, all of the guards are named Mike for some reason, and they play this joke, like, from start to finish. Like, and it's just like every time somebody asks you your name, you just say you're Mike, and they're like, oh, how's it going, Mike? And they just think you're Mike because everybody's named Mike for some reason. And there's no reason for it. It's just dumb humor. Um, as soon as you said it, I laughed anyways. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's, and this whole game is like that. And, like, it is a game that also has just these numerous, numerous, like, one-off visual gags and, like, entire gameplay sequences that are just one long visual gag mm. that'll get you from one point to another, like, in a, in a more fun way than it, would, than it would be just normally playing the game the way you would by just, like, sneaking around. It's like... The, the one that, that got me early on that I literally just died at is that you go into a sewer and, and he's narrating, like, you're, you're, the, the framing of the game is that Jesse is, like, in a sort of tribunal and he's relating the story of what happened uh, during his escape to his superiors, uh, to, to, you, know, you know, and, like, you get to kind of make up parts of it as you go. So, like, at certain points the game will stop you, like, like, uh, you know, I, I got to the warehouse, and there were, and then the game will pause, and there will be, like, a number, like, one or two, and then you can be, like, one, and th there was one guard, and then you can sort of change the story in really fun, dynamic ways like that. So, I got to the sewer, and you get down there, and, and he's just like, I got to the sewer, and the first thing that I noticed was, and it was just like, rats, squirrels, and it was like, well, I chose rats, and he was like, it was flooded by an entire congregation of rats that all saw me as just a piece of cheese. So he turns into a piece of cheese and you have an elaborate escape sequence oh as a God. piece of cheese and you have to like head bonk fucking obstacles in your way as a piece of cheese. <laughs> and it's like, it makes no sense whatsoever. And it's never referenced again, but it's just this one <laughs> dumb 
It's just this it, one elaborate one-off gag to get you through what would be a, a, be a, a boring sewer level. But we found a way to make it fun. Um, and the whole game to, is always pulling fun and varied shit like that. Um, but it's basically just it's a stealth puzzle game, basically. Uh, like, like you, you go through areas, like, you either sneak past guards or you neutralize them uh, silently. Um, and, and you usually want to engage with the guards and neutralize them silently because you, you get level ups and you get perks for doing so. And they're, like, they're really good perks, too. Like, <laughs> oh, like, uh, like, I can walk 35% faster. Or, like, I, I, it only takes one punch to knock a guard out instead of two. Things like that. So, like, it's actually, like, worth engaging with the stealth mechanics and engaging with the guards. Um, instead of just, like, running past everything. Because mm -hmm. the level up bonuses are really super worth it. They're not just like, oh, you get a couple extra hit points or something. Like, every one comes up with, like, you get a set of two perks that you can choose from. So, you kind of, like, make your own Jesse Fox build as you go. Uh, and you get ten levels over the course of the game. So, you get to pick, like, there's 20 abilities and you get ten of them. Uh, so that's cool. Um, and it, there's also a lot of uh, item collecting and like a lot of item combining uh, to, to make really specific and silly things to, to progress through the game. Um, like one of my favorites is like uh, you go into a base and you start finding this item called C1. And you go and you find another C1. Then you find two more C1s, and you get to oh something. God. And then you get to something that needs to be blown up. And okay, yeah, I need to connect. I need to combine the C1, 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 and C1 to make C4. Uh, or I like, I, I like. He gets to a point, a point where he can't. He, he's not allowed to punch any of the guards, and he's not allowed to shoot anybody. So he's got to find another way to take them out. I need chloroform. So you go, and you search around the lab, and you find chloro, and you find form. That's how you scientifically make chloroform. This is so fucking stupid. I love it's, it. <laughs> and there's... It, the whole game is just really dumb, stupid shit like this. Um, but the man potatoes, again, it's, it's puzzling your way through the stealth situations with, like, guards and cameras. Um... But the cool thing is that the game is just constantly switching it up, like, so you don't get bored. Like, like, like the, 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 the cheese thing um, that I was talking about, where, like, you, you just run through the sewers instead of doing a boring sewer level where you're trying to stay hidden. Like, like the game's just, like, it's, it's big on either adding fun gimmicks or limitations to the way you have to approach the stealth, or it just takes you out of that entirely and letting you do something. Like, there's some run-and-gun segments that are really fun, some fun vehicle portions. So, like, you've got, like, that bread-and-butter gameplay of stealth. It's, like, really <laughs> solid. <laughs> Uh, but the game's just constantly pulling you away from that every once and again to, like, to give you a breather. Um, yeah. And, and that feels great. Uh, and the boss fights are all really good. Like, no two bosses are really ever really ever handled the same. Like, there's, there's either, like, a, a fun gimmick or, like, you have to, like, puzzle out how to damage the boss. Um, and it's usually just, like, really either clever use of items or, like different ways of using the environment or dodging things in a specific way. So like, the gameplay is just, it keeps just doing really smart things to keep you engaged. You never get stuck doing one thing too long, but it never feels like any of these things are underthought. Like everything That's so feels, fucking cool. Everything, yeah. everything, you're, everything you're saying sounds so much like so much fun. I really like being committed to that framing device. That the very goofy framing device. Yes, yeah, and then they get they play around with that a lot. Uh, like, like in the game, like, like 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 where you get to like shape the story. Like there, like two of my favorites are. Um, uh, uh, there's a part where you have to sneak past uh, this pack of dogs, and they're all asleep. And when you get there, he's like, he's like, I ran into a wild pack of dogs, but they weren't just any normal dogs. They had, and then you can be like, they had extra good hearing or extra good sense of sense of smell uh. so you select one whichever you select determines how you have to get through that area and the game <laughs> and the game saves at that point as well oh god it's so <laughs> playful and, Holy and shit. so like if you choose the scent you've got like a, like a, an indicator of which way the wind is blowing and then there's like this effect on on your character that's showing you like where his scent is blowing and you have to sneak through the dogs Holy and, shit! And if there, and if you choose hearing, you have to like tap the stick to like get through the area. But the funny thing is, it's like you have a codec, 
you have a walkie-talkie, and the dudes that you're working with will sometimes call you. So you have to call them before you go into the dock. Do not call me for the next ten minutes. Um, and, and, like, they let you run into there and let that happen. Like, they don't tell you that, like, maybe you should call your superior officer or somebody. They don't Good tell joke. you. Yeah, it's, like, I did not care that the game got me. Like, I was like, okay, that's... Because as soon as you get to the middle of the screen, your fucking phone rings. He stops. A big thing appears above his head, and he's just like, uh-oh. And then there's the dog's fucking mauling. <laughs> and it's hilarious. <laughs> so, like, when you get to that screen, <laughs> and after you pick how they're going to detect you, you have to call... You have to call the dude first, like, look, don't call me <laughs> for the next five minutes, okay? <laughs> and then you sneak through the area. It's really cute. And then there's a, a boss fight with, like, a tentacle monster... Um, and when you get to the monster, it's like, it's like, it's like, it was a huge, ugly tentacle monster, and it had, and then it'll pop up numbers on the bottom of the screen, like, two, eight, or, 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 or like, two, twelve, or sixteen, or two, twelve, eight, or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it's two, six, twelve. And so, like, okay, like, he's probably going to comment on the number of tentacles, right? So, like, if you want to make the boss easy, you probably, what, choose two? Right? I'm looking for an uh -huh. agreement. Okay, yeah. So it's like it's like so you pick two, and he goes, and the ugly bastard had two dozen tentacles. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so like the the fucking answers are always kind of like you're gonna get a you're gonna get a funny result, and it's just it's really really good. Uh, another gimmick that I like in the game is that like uh, shortly into the game, and, and like right after you get a gun. You run into a, you meet the really hot doctor doctor lady, and like okay. he makes a promise not to kill any guards the whole time he's there. So now you've got a lethal gun that's hmm. that now becomes useless against all the guards because now you're not allowed to kill any guards for the rest of the game. Like that is the <laughs> you like once you get that you are not allowed to kill guards at all. So the funny thing is, it's just like if you're not great at the stealth, you may have to end up pulling the gun out and using it. So if you do shoot a guard to immobilize them, you have to use your own med kits to heal them to make sure they don't bleed out. <laughs> That's such... <laughs> that is such a fucking good mechanic! It's so Even good! There does seem to be a lot of, like, gameplay and story interacting. Yeah, in this. that's yeah. the like, best kinda... part. That's the best part. It's like, this stuff isn't compartmentalized. It's not just like, oh, there's a funny story. There's yeah. a funny script. And then gameplay. It all is mingled together. And it, it like that's why it feels like it's such a complete package. Yeah, um, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, I loved this game. Uh, I think the only time it actually falters is, like, right at the end. Fuck. <laughs> it's, not, it's not terrible. It doesn't ruin the game. But, like, mm -hmm. the way that the story's being told, there's this constant air of, like, a question that you keep asking yourself. And it's not a question that ever needed answered. And he answers it at the end, and it just kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, that per somebody, like, they're telling a really good joke, and then it goes one layer too deep, and it's not funny. Like, where you take okay. a where you take away something, and it's just like, oh, no, nah, I wish you would have just left that. Like, it's, it's not offensive okay. or anything. It's nothing like that. It's just like, oh, I think you kind of cheapened the joke a little bit. It doesn't, mm. aww. But it does not take away, like, the other 11 fucking hours of time that yeah. I spent laughing out loud at this game and just posting stuff constantly from it. That sounds pretty surprisingly long, too. Like, yeah, longer like, than the actual Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, like, it's, like, 12 hours. I was shocked. At how, like, I literally thought that this was going to be, like, a five to six hour game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it ended up giving me a solid 12 and I was not bored for any of it I was not frustrated for any of it I had a really good time the, I think the only other time they goof up really bad is that there's a real bad Asian caricature late in the game and like oh mm -hmm. man and they, they don't say anything offensive but it's just that dumb terrible accent that people do and it's like why no you were so, no you went so it's far, the, and, like, all the humor in this game is not offensive at all, and you just kind of do the weird, eh. But again, I don't think that it, kills the game, but it just... little little disheartening, I guess. I'm on the no, same yeah, page. No, yeah, makes in some, perfect sense. 
I'm on the Steam page and somebody posted a gif of cheese running away from rats. It's really it's good. A, I posted a, I posted a video I posted a video of it on my uh, plushy account. Uh, I thought because I thought it was hilarious. And they're playing a Benny Hill theme while you're oh running. Oh my god! It's a Benny Hill like they composed a Benny Hill like theme for that. So uh, yeah. it, it's really it's not, you you could probably find it on uh, Polly Plushy's media page, but it's yeah. really fuck. I loved it. But this game's great. I need great. to play this now yes. and then pick the squirrel option. Yes! Yeah, do the other one. Yeah, this game's real good. Unmetal is really... It's it's funny. It's a genuinely good game to play. I I don't have much I can complain about with wow. this game. I'm like, I, I've... Like, like I said, like when I first played the demo for this game, it really caught me off guard. I was not expecting it to be good at all. Like I just kind of looked at it and was like, I don't know. You're probably just going to be Metal Gear. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I think, I think there's a stigma attached to doing like, ha, it's a parody game. Like it's not going to be its own thing as well. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this is very much like you don't need Metal Gear Solid to to understand and appreciate what this yeah. game's doing. Cool. Like, I like the thing you said about, like, when they do a reference, that's not the yeah. entire joke is reference. It's, like, tied to another game yeah, of, like, like it's the, the movie happening. Yeah, like, it, like the reference is just part of something else funny that is happening. Like, if you get that it's, extra reference, it's just a little bit of icing on top. Because so much of 2000s humor is, uh, hey, reference, uh, and then that's the start and end of the joke. Hey, remember River City Rampage? Yeah. Uh. Oh. Look, it's a thing from Mario. You guys know Mario. You guys like Mario. <laughs> ah! Just like that time, I was Mario. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> they got. They have a good. Uh, they have a good King of the Hill reference in this game. Good. It's really good. They, they do. A, they do a joke about you know how like a Full Metal Jacket has that line about yeah you know there's only two things that come from Texas. Steers and the other thing. I don't know the joke. You don't Sorry, neither of us get it. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. Steers and Sorry, queers. Bobby. Steers and queers. Uh, there's only two things that come from Texas. It's like there's only two things that come. There's only two things that come from Texas. Propane and propane accessories. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I appreciated that. There's a lot good. of good humor. Like all all of the military people in this game are made to look like the gigantic fools that they are. It's great. It in no way glorifies that life, and it's great. <laughs> Good. It's fantastic. Yeah. Unmetal. Please, go play Unmetal. It is really, really good, I promise you. You will laugh. You will have a good time. You do not, not need... You don't need the Metal Gear Solid uh, experience to enjoy this game. The doctor lady looks very hot. She's very good. I like her. <laughs> cool. All right. Rhett. Hi. Hey, buddy. Oh boy, I just realized we've got both in the same podcast. Oh. Because one. I watched Castlevania. Oh, okay. We've got the other first half of that coming later. Uh-oh. Okay, so Castlevania, the show on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went through a bit of a weird journey with this one. Oh, oh my god, man. Let's So go. I briefly mentioned on the last podcast that I binged season one, because it's only four episodes. Mm -hmm. And it's a good promising start for sure, but it's obviously, it's just kind of a teaser because it's only four episodes mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. it's building the crew. Like, they meet Alucard at the end. They're, it's very clearly, hey, remember Castlevania 3? Yeah. We're kind of, <laughs> yep. we're kind of building that crew. Like, he's got Sifa and Trevor in there as well. Mm -hmm. We're building the crew. We're going to go fight Dracula now. And there's some good action, and there's some very, very like anti-church stuff in it as well. Yeah, like, we love it that. Really bl blames yeah. them for everything. Yeah, love to see it because they uh, they kill Dracula's wife. Oh, and Dracula is uh, he probably mad about that? He's pretty pissed about that for real. I mean, it's a good <laughs> look. It's a good reason to be mad. Yeah. So uh, in response, you know, tit for tat, he decides to e extinct, make humans extinct. Like, 100%. I'm okay with that. He's a little mad. Yeah. <laughs> so, season two. This is the one where John also watched. Yep. Season two is much slower. Mm. Season two is, like... See, I thought this was going to be more of an episodic kind of adventure show. Like, a, you know, single episodes, like, little arcs, like... Like an anime, like, you know, the first mm -hmm. part of Full Metal Alchemist or something. Mm -hmm. It's really not that. Like, 
Season 2 has them go to the Trevor, or the Belmont Mansion, and go to the library, <laughs> and then stay in the library mm. for, like, four episodes. Oh. It's like the it. whole... I thought I remember it being most of the season. Oh, oh no. I mean, it is only an eight-episode yeah, season. Like it's, yeah, like, oh, these, these okay. seasons are not your typical anime season. Yeah. Mm. So it's like they get there in the third one, and then they leave, like, two from the end. Roughly, I think. But, no, they are definitely there for a pretty large portion of and then on top so there's not much action happening with the main characters which is a little odd I thought a whole lot of the show in season 2 becomes from the perspective of the villains Mm -hmm. where you've got like Dracula's whole crew has been dramatically fleshed out whereas in season 1 it's just kind of off screen and it's just him Mm -hmm. they pull characters from the PS2 games oh yeah that's wild is when they start pulling that lore Yep. So apparently, the, I glanced at the Wikipedia page for that. Apparently, it's like, oh, this was set three years after uh, Castlevania Three, so it is that same era. Mm-hmm. But I know nothing about that game otherwise, other than I saw yes, Isaac and Hector, these two uh, forge masters that work for Dracula in the mm-hmm. show, and they they I mean they explain it, but like a forge master is someone that can like summon demons from hell. So he needs these two humans in his army, even though he hates humans. And he's got these two guys that also kind of hate humans. humans. Yeah. And one of them is just, like, completely fine with the whole extinct... Why do I... I keep wanting to say extinguish, but it's, like, (laughs) genocide. I mean, that's what it is, basically. That's what it is, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And the other one is just, like, I'm more cool with, like, a culling of the population. Maybe keep everyone in cages afterwards for you vampires to feed on. Like, his priorities are really strange. He's like, (laughs) I don't want to kill everyone. I just want to kill mostly everyone. Yeah. He's more reasonable. It's fine. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you gotta have things to eat. Yeah. But Dracula's like, yeah, that sounds good. We're not fucking doing that. We're not. That whole that whole set of exchanges where Dracula, where he's like, "Are you gonna kill everybody?" And Dracula's like, uh, "No." And then later he's like, <laughs> "Well, yes." Yeah. And then the other vampires are like, "Won't we starve to death after that?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So, so then there's a bunch of other vampires in the crew who are like, "This is not a good plan, realistically." Like this is very off. bad for <laughs> us, actually. Dra- it's an extended... He's, Dracula's doing an extended suicide, essentially. Yeah. And then tracking I mean, everyone else in with him is the idea. That's the thing is, like, the show has a habit of kind of character motivations maybe shifting between seasons instead mm. of gradually happening during seasons. Mm. So a, a big thing in season two is that Dracula has actually kind of doesn't give a shit about the war anymore. Mm-hmm. Where he's just like, he killed a bunch of people, now he's just really still just kind of sad his wife is gone. And then Aww. he's very unmotivated to do much of else. Mm. He'll, lay, like the, he'll lay in bed and eat peanut butter he all day. He really kind of does lay around for like most of that season. <laughs> Being sad and mopey. So the other vampires, there's a whole arc about like them conspiring against him. Mm. And like, like, there's this one main character... A female vampire who I think is also from that PS2 game who is like I should be running this show. Nobody can kill humans better than me, you know. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of action. Like a lot of the action scenes are in flashback. Like, hey, remember that time I killed all those humans? Flashback. Like, so it's never super like thrilling to mm-hmm. see like scenes from the past. And then the last couple episodes or like the last two episodes or so goes fucking wild like yep yep it goes it's it feels like too quickly honestly where it felt like there was no build-up for the trevor group where it's just like hey we're just a library and then climax yeah it's just (laughs) immediate out of nowhere climax Mm -hmm. in a huge way it's just like hey do 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 they play the music from the video game. Like, not literally, but it's, you know, a remix. Uh, uh, and it's super obvious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I finished season two, and I was thinking about it afterwards, and there's a really good scene with Alucard towards the end. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of the big emotional climax of the whole thing, because, you know, he's fighting his father and all, and that's not exactly easy for him. Hey, daddy issues, the show. Hey! 
Yay! And I was thinking about these two seasons afterwards where it's like, if it had been a movie, then you obviously would have had to make Alucard the main character. Yeah. Because Trevor doesn't really have an arc at this point. Mm-mm. Whereas Alucard kind of did because, you know, focus more on him at the start instead of like episode four of season one, like show his childhood a little bit more. Like, there's a payoff at the end that kind of isn't set up, and mm-hmm. so it feels a little cheap. John, it almost feels. It almost. Oh yeah, it almost feels like it maybe would have been better off as a movie where they would have had yeah. to actually like focus and maybe call some of these threads. Yeah, right. and stop meandering for the whole thing. Yeah. So season three. <laughs> mm-hmm. So season three is is one I haven't of, watched. Yeah. So I'll be try to be as vague as possible here. Mm-hmm. But is definitely the worst indulgences of season two kind of pushed even more to the forefront. Oof. Yeah. No, I had I, I will fully admit I didn't really have a great time with this one. This mm-hmm. was hey, I'm watching a show in English for once. Oh which means that's weird. I can just listen and look at Twitter. Oh, that's kinda of, that's bad when you're doing a show like yeah. that. That's never a good sign. Because there's even less until the very end. Okay, the last like two episodes go even crazy bigger than season one did. Mm-hmm. You mean season, season two? Season two. Okay, they go even crazy bigger at the end. But so, so the first eight eight episodes though have like basically no action, and I think the few action scenes again are like flashbacks. It's just <laughs> character positioning and talking, and talking, oh, and talking. No. And some people love this. Some people really like this one. I like Simple Gear. I don't like a whole lot of talking. I like a whole lot of fighting. You want this, this boy needs some punching, and he needs it now. Yeah, it's the first thing he's heading to now. at the party. He's going to the punch bowl. Nice. Um, I don't know. I don't know what mm. this means to everyone in, in the chat right now, but this whole show is written by Warren Ellis. There's that too. A big comic book it was a big comic book author, as I understand it. Apparently, mm. like this year, there was some sexual allegation stuff yep. that came oh, out. Oh, forgot about that. Oh, so that all- sucks. So it's also possible that the recent season four is the way it is, is because they went, okay, show's over. We're yeah, t- cut and run. Bail, bail. Oof. So, okay. but Konami's like, really we don't need that. more I, of this kind of publicity. It really is just really awkward, like knowing that now. And every episode like has like a fifteen second title card at the start, and it's just written by Warren Ellis. Like his name is so for oh no. front forward compared to like literally everyone else. Okay, I. It's good that John brought that up because I wasn't I, sure I, how to. I completely forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of it in terms of I remember people saying this sure is a Warren Ellis thing because it's yeah. got a lot of swearing and and blood. I mean, the blood I'm fine with. Sure, of whatever. Course. It's a violent show. The swearing just and the the swearing and the humor just feels so off mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like you have you know this gothic setting and the characters will be like hey fuck you buddy when you, like when you play those games like they're speaking like very elegantly yeah. uh because they're they're reflecting like this idealized version of a very mm-hmm. specific point in time where people didn't go hey fuck you buddy i'm walking there oh there's just scenes of like trevor and alucard being like fuck you no fuck you like what? it's really does really weird at times that does not I that doesn't work for me. I think there's a dick joke at one point. Like some of it's it's way out of some of it made me character. laugh. Yeah. But I I think the fuck you no fuck you. <laughs> Those did kind of make me laugh. But I get it. Yeah. So season 3 also has the problem of ca- like the characters kind of all get split up is most mm. say it. And these threads they never really connect at all Mm -hmm. so it's just a season of like six characters and you maybe get one scene per episode with each of them Um, it sounds very game of thrones to me yeah like that was my takeaway when you told me about it i was definitely like this is just a soap opera at this point so it's really there's four main like groups and then between that like a couple characters are in the same location so they'll interact but like the four core like stories that are going on do not interact in the season, which is kind of crazy because mm-hmm. it's just, Oh, 
So I was like, I was like writing it down. It's like, wow, this whole episode was just seen with Trevor, seen with Hector, seen with Isaac, seen with somebody else. End of episode. So like, none of these episodes. I mean, some of them. There's like one episode that's like has a scene with Trevor, then somebody else, then goes back to Trevor, and I was like legitimately shocked. Like, oh, this is a Trevor episode. Because I think the problem with those other episodes when it's like one scene per character is it's just you d you make such little progress yeah. forward in the story. Yeah. yeah. Like they aren't they're like the furthest possible thing from a standalone anime episode that tells a cute little story in 20 minutes when it's just here's a five minute conversation followed by a five minute conversation followed by an eight minute conversation. And usually by the end, that's when I'm starting to pull out the phone and be like, okay, what's Twitter up to? All right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's or a bad, one point. bad, bad sign. Like if, I think if like at some episode... point I am watching a show and I at any point want to look at Twitter, uh, that show, yeah. uh, that show is in danger. <laughs> the show, I spent like right at like episode five and six was in danger. Mm. I was like, if I didn't know season eight was the end, I or might. Season four. Season, season four. Why do I say, yeah. Why did you say eight? Okay, so the, uh, here's why I said eight is because season one is four episodes. Four, season yeah. two is eight episodes. Yeah. Season three is ten episodes. It's also the longest one so far. Mm. <laughs> and it's just like, could have tightened it up a lot there, buddies. <laughs> this feels like a consequence of how the Netflix yeah. ecosystem works. Yeah. So it's like, we're... We're not going to release like episodes of television that are like good on their own terms. We're just exactly. going to drop yeah. ten episodes, and you're going to binge it, and you're going to like it, fuckers. Yeah, I really, I really agree with that. Where like none of these feel like they have any interest in being episodes. It's just three hour movie or however long yeah, it would actually take. Yeah. yeah. So you get like we have a beginning and end planned, and then yeah. we're going to kind of spin wheels for a while. And this is definitely the most spinning wheels of all the seasons. And I say that after season two, which also had, had them a lot in the of that. library. Because the Trevor story in this one is they get to a village in like episode one, and that's the entire location they're in for the whole season. <laughs> and it's just and it's just like it's not even it's like an even smaller village than season one had, and it's just like, oh this is really it, huh? <laughs> this is really it, huh? So the way this season ends, though, is fucking ridiculous because all like the four main plot lines all have a big moment. Mm -hmm. And episode nine is just constant cutting between all four of them. OK, where it's like one character is having a huge action scene. Then this character is also in an action scene. Then these characters are also in an action scene. It's just it's like the end of Star Wars Episode One, where there were like four battles happening yeah, at once. Where you got yeah, it's a little it's exhausting. That, it's that's all Episode Nine, so it's like twenty-seven minutes long or something. It's one of the most exhausting things I've ever seen, and I've seen Simple Gear. Yeah, like you've seen <laughs> like loads of trigger things where they do yeah. like this is just commonplace. This it was such an exhausting climax, and then. I think episode 10. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> Exhausting climax. <laughs> well, here's what. Okay. Here's the other thing that makes it really weird. Two of them are action scenes. Like two of the main plot threads that are hap happening are, are action scenes. The other two are sex scenes. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's extremely, extremely weird cutting between awkward sex scenes and then vampires being killed That's no for like half an hour. <laughs> it's so much. It's so much. And I think episode 10 is like Trevor fighting a boss from one of the games. And it's pretty cool. Shit. Fuck yeah. Like it ends strongly. But as a season, I was like, what the? Fuck what that? happened here? And then season four, they did obviously kind of feel like they rushed a bit to tie it all together. Mm -hmm. But season four, they just knocked it out of the park finally. <laughs> oh, they finally got it. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I kept thinking, like, it's the Simple Gear XV of Castlevania. Oh, <laughs> good it. lord. I For something to get, like, a Simple Gear reference, I feel, <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I don't know that you should hand those out like candy. I know. It just felt like 
it's oh i had a way of wording it that i completely forgot for some reason because like i forgot i'd watched castlevania till like an hour before the podcast <laughs> <laughs> well oh i think it's just like once this season starts going it just doesn't stop mm, like that's cool. the main takeaway it's like once you're in like episode five or six it's just like by the way the whole last half of the season is just escalating nonsense in a really great way. It just <laughs> goes. Right. And like, it's not that it's slow at the start either. Like the very start of season four made me a little mad. Cause it's like, why wasn't this just the show the entire time? Ah, yeah. The, I feel start, that. the start of season four is Trevor and Sypha recounting like the last seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, they show what could have been the climax to standalone episodes mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, and then we went to this one town and then there was a vampire in the church and yada, 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 yada. So they show that action scene and it goes six weeks later, this other ep ending of a storyline that they had. Then five weeks ago, th the ending of this story that they had. Like, oh my God, that sounds it's just, maddening. It's just frustrating because it's like the point is to show that they're kind of exhausted with all these adventures they've been having, but they are showing as little as possible. <laughs> It's like, I would have enjoyed those adventures. Yeah. I would have yeah. enjoyed if that was the show, <laughs> if it was just a more standalone episode thing, but that's just not what they set out to make. But, like, at least we get that glimmer of it. And then, yeah, season four is just really good. It just... <laughs> well, because the other thing, though, besides that montage at the very start of, like, the seven weeks ago, c cutting towards the present, all the action happens in the present. Like, there's not any... Oh, remember that cool thing that happened to us as vampires like a hundred years ago that you don't care about? Mm -hmm. It's all happening in the real time. Like, there feels like there are stakes now. Because, you know, I just really didn't like the flashback action scenes. Right, yeah. And, hey, those plot threads that uh, were separated in season three, they're finally starting to come together again. And, like, hey, hey this is all hey. actually going somewhere. Yes. And, then, like, the climax with... Uh, I think it's Carmilla, Isaac, and Hector is so good. <laughs> and then it immediately gets surpassed by the climax with Trevor, Sypha, and Alucard. Fuck yes. It goes. The, hey, the ending stinger with, I believe, Carmilla and Isaac was very good. Yeah. So both of the main threads pay off exquisitely. The final fight of the season is just absolutely ridiculous like you have no idea how hard it's gonna go by the end life is good excellent all right i'm probably jumping back in yeah they have so. the funniest thing about this show is that when they're doing the real huge action scenes with trevor trevor sypha and alucard is that trevor is so obviously the weakest one in the group <laughs> they just have so much fun animating her magic with sypha sypha's magic is so ridiculous it's, like in and it continues two. to get more ridiculous like they just have so much fun with her yeah the, and the, the animators i believe have said as much that they're like big fans of sypha and that's probably yeah. why she gets a lot of uh yeah. play in the show but her magic is just so interesting and like it feels like they have a cool idea and then they go oh shit we can't have her do that every time because it would just win yeah. Like, there's one part where she just, like, makes giant ice buzz saw and cuts, like, 20 things in half just right instantly. That's pretty <laughs> wild. Is, yeah. So it's just like, why doesn't she do that every time? Well, okay, she, she, she can't do that every time. It wouldn't be fun to watch. Cause, cause, because of mana limitations. Yeah. They go. never actually bring anything like that up. They never say, oh, she's nerving herself. But it's just, she just Trevor, has have fun. sex with me. There you go. No, they don't uh, do that. Sorry. <laughs> I think the one knock against season four is that they go so over ambitious with the animation fight scenes mm -hmm. is that they do get a little choppy frame rate wise. Uh... Mm. But it's because I've never, I feel like I've almost never seen something go as ambitious so consistently as season four does. Because oh. like a lot of anime doesn't have a ton of camera movement. No, no, camera movement is not something you see a lot of. Where this is just like, hey, we're doing like a whole shitload of nonstop 3D, you know, revolving actions. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know, I know, the I know what you're saying. There's a lot of dynamic <laughs> camera movement. 
Yeah. So, like, I get where they had to cut some corners, like, they don't have a ton of key at, or in between frames, but it still looks pretty good. Cool. And it's just, it's so much. So, yeah, and then it inexplicably really ties itself off nicely with no, there's no sequel tees. Mm. Nope. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Cool. What a cool. <laughs> I'm very glad it's that a paid weird off. Show. I'm yeah. so glad it paid off at the end, but mm -hmm. season three is a little bit to get through. I, I told you. I think I told you. I was like, I by like coming off of season two, even though I basically liked it, I wasn't necessarily in a rush to keep yeah. up with it season by season. Oh man, if it if I'd watched season three like when it when season four wasn't there to follow mm -hmm. it up, I would have been like. Man, season four man. might have been a hard bargain. I saw I was reading the form a forum thread about season three, like from twenty I think nineteen, and people were like, "We waited like two years for this." Ooh, <laughs> oh, felt that one in my Christ. soul. Yeah, Christ, I like binging shows when they're done. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I'm, I'm that waiting on eighty six, then then Attack on yeah. Titan right now. Man, I had a thought about Attack on Titan the other day when I was like, January. Wow, I can't believe the final season is a year away. Oh, no! October. What the fuck? It's only two months away. What the fuck oh, happened? Oh, no. This year really kind of caught it up on me. It just fucking went. Man, it's realizing how close that is now. It was just like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be like. What just happened? What, like the last season is what? 20 episodes? I have no idea. Yeah, because if it's going to be 20, and we're not going to be watching the end of the show until, like, July of next year. I still feel like that's going to be so much sooner than you realize. I don't want to think about it. As somebody that literally just turned yeah. 41, I <laughs> don't want to think about it. Don't think about it. Don't speak it. <laughs> don't speak. I know <laughs> just what you're thinking. Yeah, so I was looking at the history on my anime list, and I was just like, why is there an empty week? Oh, right, I watched Castlevania, jeez. <laughs> like, maybe not the greatest praise for the show, Review. where like, I kind of forgot about it a week later. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, right before we, we went to air, Rhett was like, oh, yeah, I watched Castlevania. I just remembered. I was like, that's a little damning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well, that happens. I mean, season four was just... Pay off brain candy action scenes mm. pretty much nonstop. <laughs> Catharsis. God. God, the Carmilla payoff is so good. Oh my god, I'm so here for it. Oh. There's oh my, there's a crazy berserk reference in season four. <laughs> where one character just dons a suit of armor and has a huge fucking sword and just goes to town. Just like like the biggest, baddest ass Dark Souls Zweihander sword, like sword, just swings it and like cuts six people in half at once. It's very good. I'm here for it. Like I okay. dig that. Like, do you think that that yeah. was uh, was that like, like what what season was that? That was in season four. Yeah, I'm wondering now if maybe that would have been a sort of a, mm -hmm. a, pay, a payoff to you know, dude that died. Oh yeah! Oh, I, gotcha. I don't think so because I have to imagine this was in production a while. And maybe, maybe it's kind of. I think it came that. out in March. Oh, I think okay, it was yeah, okay, he, yeah. He was, yeah. That would not have. Yeah, wasn't sure. Okay. I mean, hey, people have been making Berserk references for a long time. Yeah, well, I <laughs> it's mean, pretty and popular. Deserve it. There's a little so. Like the reason, yeah. Berserk, yeah, like it literally is one of the main influences there. Like of everybody that's in animation, yeah. anime, or manga. I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Given the timing, I wasn't sure when this was produced or anything like that. Yeah. I think March was definitely beforehand, though. Mm. I was just like, oh man. Hey, maybe they could handle a berserk anime that that apparently nobody else can. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Because those not great. Has, for such a prestige series, it has such a weird, poor track record yeah. with anime adaptations. Just like the only like, just, just read the, the manga. One, just read the manga. The, 
the one good one, but then it doesn't have an ending. Mm-hmm. Like it ends like at the worst place possible, yep. as I understand the, the, it. Yep. I watched the three movies. Like there's a movie yeah. trilogy. It ends in the exact same place yeah. as far as I yeah. know. That's so fucking weird. Like they don't know how to go. And then there was the really bad one that I think is the one that goes past uh, that Oof. moment. Yeah, just I'll just read the manga that. if you want your berserk. Mm-hmm. I like animation and music, though. I get it. Like, look, go turn on your record player. <laughs> They're a Berserk light novel. There you go. Get a Berserk oh, light God. novel. There you go. Because I can't do manga somehow, but... <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So I guess that's the transition to John. All right. Cool. John, what have you well, been doing? You we been got doing? a very easy transition there, because I want to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles X. Okay. Oh, that's boy. a video game. It's maybe the most video game. Yeah, no, yeah, like it is so video game. It's so video game that I, it has me afraid of Zeno. It has me afraid of Zeno Blade Chronicles do. It's so video game. It has an Ubisoft logo. It probably should <laughs> give it. Like, I bet you open that game's map and they're like, man, it just barf so many icons. They literally fly out of the TV screen at you. It is incomprehensible. I just, oh god, <laughs> Icon is, Barf does it to me every time. I can't. So the the things that I think make this meaningfully differentiated from like other open world stuff is that it's very fucking hard, and a lot of the stuff you have to figure out, and a lot of the icons that you are wanting to do don't come trivially, mm. like the like the towers like there's a very early tower that's like right in the middle of everything and it's just on top of this giant giant mountain you can't possibly get on top of and it's like okay we'll figure that out in 40 hours um the developers then, were like see that mountain you, you can go there yeah you can't climb it see yeah that mountain you, you can fuck see another mountain. man on that mountain <laughs> see the mountain you can go there but you're gonna have to fucking work for it oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah is the is the theme here and also um when you run into an area with hard enemies they will destroy you i mean that's absolutely kinda, mercilessly that is the zeno thing is that yeah. you're yep. gonna find it like you will find enemies just out and about yo like here's this level 89 tomato oh cool <laughs> i'm dead the tomato just fucking killed me <laughs> the um you can access all five areas right from the start you can walk to all five areas which is wild um so it's just a very big open thing world um <laughs> it's, open it's world. a very big open setting a very big open <laughs> land to explore um open islands in a grand sea um and i think that if you are going to go into this game you should want to explore the big open world and have fun doing that because that is the big appeal here. Yeah, you've got to be wanting to do that. There is no going in for, I'm going to play the JRPG for story. No. Which, Which I, I think, think you, you can you do can. with Xenoblade. And Xenoblade 2 is the one I was going to say. Yeah. I think you can do it with those games. Probably even more with Xenoblade 2. Yeah. Um, this one, nah. Nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You need to be here for the Explorer. You need to be up here for the MMO number grind like that is the game. Mm. There are 12 story chapters. They are all like 20 to 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So the rest of the game is side shit. Oh, is exploring. Boy. Oh boy. You'll get. And then each of those, each of those chapters is gated with like, mm, explore 15% of the first continent or like do 15% of the, the, the quest, the icons. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Um, those those requirements never get ridiculous. I actually never hit once I um after like the first one, I was always hitting the number requirements before every one of them. And I was like, usually like subconsciously them. you're gonna be exploring anyway because you kinda have to. Yeah. So you're probably gonna hit those things. You'll grind without realizing it, basically. <clears throat> yeah. And like the, the more the more the more you can hide the fact that I'm grinding from me. And, like, while I'm going out about and doing my business, the better off we are. I think the game's real good at hiding the grinding for That's the good. Part. That's good. Um, the only real grinding I did throughout the meat of the game was, like, I would find some monsters 
that were like tw- 12 levels higher than me, but I could still kill them. Mm-hmm. So I would go, I would just kill them and then go up two levels, two or three levels in like five minutes. Nice. Just like, oh, okay. And that feels really good because I feel very rewarded for poking around. Yeah. Um, so like the, the pacing of it honestly felt great to me throughout. Hmm. Um, and when I'm exploring on foot, the elevation plays a huge role. So you're constantly like trying to find a new like you you know where you're trying to go but you have to find the way up there and that's actually that's the actual challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Um in in Zelda, like that's my other AAA open world touchstone. Like I just put a bunch of points into climbing. So like by a little ways into the game I could just climb over basically anything. Yeah. Um there was not e- elevation kind of ceased being like an obstacle. A meaningful obstacle. So that mm-hmm. made the whole world feel very flat to me. Mm. Whereas this game does definitely does not feel flat. It feels very like the shape, like the shape of the world actually matters to navigating it. Instead of it just being the map and fi- going towards that icon on the map. Um, All the story bosses, you have to get, you have to be very leveled up. <laughs> so you need to do, you need, you want to explore and level up between missions. Um, I, I think the story itself was like pretty, pretty good, pretty fine. Um, like, I feel like there's a couple dangling threads in this one that there Mm. weren't resolutely were not in Xenoblade one Mm. for it Mm. ends with like a five minute big revelation sequel tease thing. What? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then there's like to Xenoblade X, not to whatever is going to happen Xenoblade 2, but oh. the un- undeveloped sequel, the Xenoblade X, oh. um, which does not exist and may never exist. Yeah, I'm going to laugh if they actually do a Xenoblade X2. But that that was the idea when they were making this. We're going to make Xenoblade X2. Oh, oh, boy. Xenoblade Y. <laughs> Xenoblade Y. <laughs> and and they, they, they dribble a couple threads throughout where they're like... Um, like they, they just put somebody points out well, it's weird how we can all, we all speak the same language wait no you're speaking my language perfectly with weird accents Uh-oh. and then they never refer to it again oh what? that's uh-huh and it's something to do with this planet and that never comes up again oh wow. that's weird yeah so it's not a lot but there's just a handful of things there's a couple of things where like they have this very cool boss fight with these new characters and then they just kind of leave after their big set piece, and then they never come back. Oh. They're just gone. <laughs> maybe you didn't explore the world enough. Maybe they're out there. Maybe, but I think what the deal is is that they were like, we'll follow back up on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's not necessarily like, it's not that it leaves things, like the, the language thing was the only thing in the game up until that dumb sequel tease that felt like a dangling mm-hmm. thread. Yeah. The, the cat people... <laughs> Thing was more like in Xenoblade this would have come back during the climax in Xenoblade 1 in Xenogears yeah. this would have come back during the climax here it's just a it is dropped Oof. Um, and the climax is very is pretty small ultimately um, like there's no final dungeon there's barely any dungeons at all actually um, it's satisfying I think it, it tells the story that it's trying to do pretty well um, like if Xenoblade 1 was about ma- having the will to make a change to to create your own fate. The then will to about, power. <laughs> then this is about having the <laughs> this is about having the will to survive in the face mm. of basically creatures that just inexplicably want you dead, and then surviving in the face of that. Mm. Um, and the, that theming resonated with me. I actually I felt pretty good about how the everything wrapped up. It's still. <laughs> It still felt like a Xeno game, ultimately. Just the, just a smaller one. The turn from how mad about the grinding you were to the climax was very funny to me. I mean, I was just mad because I, I, I had a shitty week. And Look, then I was man, like, uh, I get mad at video games on Twitter all the time. Oh, but, you can't, but you can't hear my tone when I'm mad. Um, <laughs> it, like, if you've ever heard me be fake mad on stream or on a podcast, uh... that's what it's supposed to sound like. I'm not really mad. Boy, Paul, oh, you tweeted enough. some stuff this morning that made me so profoundly sad. Okay, okay, look, that one. Okay, I was really pissed off about that one. 
See? And then you immediately say, this specific time I actually was extremely mad. This is the one specific time where, like, the tone would have been, I'm literally screaming right now. The people need to get out of my way because I'm going to start uh, throwing computer monitors at everybody. I felt pretty bad. I, you felt bad. How do you think I felt? True. <laughs> I, felt, I felt a little bit chuffed by that. Rhett, here's why I was mad. In Xenoblade, I got to the end, I got to the final boss, I was able to make it past every single mm. preceding obstacle, and I got to the final boss and got my shit kicked in, and I didn't <laughs> yeah. succeed, and then I grinded a little bit, and then I fought him again and still got my shit kicked in, and then, after three hours of grinding and Googling some strats and changing the way I was approaching it, and then I went and fought him again, and then I won. Yeah. Xeno Gears. I got to the end. <laughs> oh god! I got to Deus. Oh god! And I got my fucking shit kicked yep. for making yep. it through every single other obstacle in the game. And then I had a friend send me like a five paragraph guide. Go here, grind these these grind specific enemies. For these, oh my these god! Enemies, and then buy these items, and you'll be able to yeah. And you'll be able to um, shit can Deus. And I grinded for three hours, and then I beat the final boss. This is just a I consistent got... theme. So I got to Xenoblade X. I got before chapter 12, the final chapter. And I said, aha, I know how Xeno games go. <laughs> I'm going to do plenty of prep work before I fight this boss. That way I can win it. And then I grinded for about three hours. And oh I felt pretty God. good about it. And then I went in and fought the boss and I got my shit kicked in. <laughs> and then I screamed on Twitter. <laughs> And then I put the game down for the day, and then I went back the next day, and then I grinded it for two to three hours, and I got the level 50 mech, and then I went and kicked the final boss's ass. What's the so opposite even, of euphoria? <laughs> so even knowing, even knowing this is what's going to happen, and then, I, and then doing it ahead of time, I have to fight the boss before I can get and get that disappointment, <laughs> that despair. Then I can grind and get the three hours in. Right. So that's how, obviously, that's how I need to do it with following next Xeno games. Also, no. almost all of them, I finished it at like 50 hours on the dot, which was very funny. That's really good. Yeah, right? I can pretty much promise that's not going to happen in 2. Because Xeno Blade 2 is like a baby, baby easy game. it's way right? easier. But it has, it has loads of systems, though. That's it fine. I can deal with the systems. I just, it's just they're hard. The combat is just much more flashier. Hey, numbers, explosions. Not but there's like numbers. all these fucking like, yeah, the like gauges weaknesses and, the and gauges yeah. and comp. Like, what the fuck is all this shit? Well, I, I parse Xenoblade One and Xenoblade X, so I think I, I you'll feel probably be fine. Too. But as somebody who has not played those games in their entirety, yeah. when I looked at like when I've watched people play Xenoblade Chronicles Two, and I see all these gauges. And these weaknesses and these things that they're exploiting and there's like 12 gauges on the single enemy that keep track of my brain is just like Wh what is this i never really followed the whole like specific weaknesses or like oh do this combo to lock this ability right i was just right, like yeah i do fire then i do water to make steam explosion you and just, then i do lightning to do you I have know, a rotation yeah. you have an yeah. rotation well you know what you know there's something about xenoblade x ret <laughs> I did never actually figure out how healing worked or how reviving what? dead characters worked. What? Hey, I think I know why you had such a hard time with the final boss. Because <laughs> I didn't ever get those abilities myself. What? I didn't really pick characters that had them, so I just kind of was like, every now and then people will get healed or revived, and I didn't really understand how it worked. I was just kind of like... Were you not I'm familiar sure with the Holy Trinity of tank DPS he healer? I did not consider anything along those lines while playing the oh game, no. Oh, you I see, that, they, of... those games basically stick to that, like, very slavishly, actually. Yeah. I'm sure I did. I'm sure it was fine, just extremely hard, and not that I didn't know how to play the game. Look, it's fine. John got to the end of Trails in the Sky SC before he figured out how Orbments worked. It's fine. It's fine. If anybody's going to get through a game, if anybody's, if anything's going to prove that modern games are baby video games that you can literally just grind your face into concrete and still finish, it's John Thayer and Dark Side <laughs> Phil. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, it was nice coming off of Trails from Zero, which was which felt very easy to me. Uh, mm. It's like okay, because every every story boss 
for a while was a roadblock until I figured out where places, good places to grind. And then I was like, mm, yeah, I've got this game in the bag. And then I did. And I got to chapter nine and ten. And I got to chapter nine and I did not have it in the bag. And I got to chapter ten. And then I freaked out on Twitter because I, I did not have it in the bag. And then I did chapter and then I got to chapter 12 and I did not have it in the bag. Mm. Um, so. I don't know. I think I told Polly, I was like, Xenoblade has half as much story as Xenogears, and then Xenoblade X has half as much yeah. story as Xenoblade. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, this is one you really... X, X you would never be, be the game, game for me. That would never be the game for me. I, I didn't until I was near the end. I didn't realize, like, this one had substantially less involvement from um, Takahashi yeah. compared with Xenoblade and Xenoblade 2. So I, I think that kind of comes through. I think this kind of feels like the most like gamer one. <laughs> um, the I kept expecting there to be some turn where maybe landing on this planet and immediately like strip mining it and murder <laughs> animal you can to get resources and get stronger. I kind of thought maybe that would turn out to be bad at some point. Oh no, they don't ever follow it is, that. It's never touched on uh, it is completely good we're just trying to survive y'all i mean that's pso basically <laughs> yep it, it never touched on it's just nope that's the way it goes and the evil aliens are pretty much just evil which felt very <laughs> weird coming off of xenoblade um yeah jeez. it's like i feel like whatever complexity was there like they they throw around these a couple big sci-fi concepts like just enough to make it not feel like the game dicked you around like there's enough story here to not feel like it wasted your time right it's right, not right. breath of the wild no um it's it I, it left me satisfied in a in in the base in, in in the in that sense but like the I feel like the essence of Xenogears is felt very faintly in this one, mm. even relative to Xenoblade. Mm. So the, I, f I feel pretty certain that I, as much as I like this one, yeah, Tom brings up the Mimius homes. Like that's a cool, that's a cool little sci-fi plot term. It's not like deeply explored or anything. It's just kind of a big idea they throw in there for fun flavor. Um, the twists at the end are kind of like, okay, you tried. I appreciate that. Um, but there's no big core that I think, Xeno. You know, there, there, there wasn't the, the, the surviving thing was kind of the big core theming and I don't feel like it landed anywhere near as strongly as the big epic romance in Xenogears or even the, um, the kind of the, the make a choice theming in Xeno. Like Xenoblade is just basically trying to be Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Like at, at a million miles, at a thousand miles an hour, um, and, and that part of it really resonates with me, even though I don't care that much about the characters. Um, Xenoblade X is the weakest in that respect, I think, mm. by a large margin. It is the one I had the most fun playing. Right. Kind right, of right. kind of by far. Because Xenoblade 1, like, I felt very little incentive to engage with the side quest stuff because you would get to the boss. And once you got past the boss of an area, the next area, the rewards there would be so much better grander that you wouldn't want to keep grinding in the preceding area anymore so like it felt to me like in xenoblade one the ideal strategy was to get to the minimum level of power you needed to beat the boss and then leave that area forever yeah. and then get to the minimum level of power you need to get the bot and that wasn't that didn't fit the exploring nearly as well as it as it fits in xenoblade x xenoblade x feels very um it feels like it, it it all fits together. Like in Xenoblade 1, I was sometimes thinking like, what if this was just like a Super Nintendo game? I could, like, that you lose the scope of those environments, which is obviously, like, breathtaking. Yeah. But, like, it kind of feels like it would maybe make more sense that way. And Xenoblade X absolutely depends on the scope of its world in a cool way, where yeah. it works. Getting the mech feels so good. I figured that would getting be... The, yeah, like, you get, that has to be... Feels if, so good. If they had borked that up, it would have been, like, the biggest disappointment ever. Oh, my God. Like, talk about flattening out the world, but when you get that flying mech, it is just... It, it's exquisite. Yeah. It's, like, this huge endorphin rush after walking everywhere and, and having to deal with the 
elevation for the whole game. So like it would be stupid if you got the mech immediately. Yeah. But as a payoff as a late game payoff, it feels just extremely good. Mm. So that's my my Xeno journey continues, but I I I, I need a I need a, need a, a Xeno break. Time. Huh? I, no, I'm gonna, I'm saying I need the next Xeno. You know, I need to do Saga next because I need. Oh, you just I need, need one more. of the real weird ones. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Those are yeah, yeah. They basically just visual novels with a little bit of RPG in them. <laughs> Good, great. So that's per. That sounds perfect. Like like episode three is probably the most JRPG yeah. in terms of that's the one people like. Yeah, that's like the like that. I think it's the best PS2 JRPG myself. Awesome. Uh, episode I, two. I, that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing to get through. I, I'm so. ja- I'm jazzed for one. Like I, if I one if I is play one. fine. I still like that game as a game. Yeah. I think it's fine. Like the only thing I think is weird about one is I think like the combat animations are way too slow. Mm. Yeah, and there's no music. And that, well, yeah, I don't I, mind. I don't mind the fact that there's no music in the environments. That's just a me thing. Like I thought mm. that was actually an interesting way to present that game, even back when I first cool. played it. And I still liked it replaying that game in subsequent playthroughs. Uh, I don't like that there's only one battle theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's a little weird. Yeah. Like, even the I final boss it. is just, that's the battle theme. Are you serious? Final boss? Yeah. Yep. Xeno, Xeno, <laughs> Xenoblade X was the first one where they didn't feel like... Oh, the there is a final boss theme. Was... Okay, okay, there's a final boss theme. I was misremembering. Okay, weird. People keep saying that. Um, Xeno, Xenoblade X is like the first one where the boss scene does not out, outstay its welcome. Because in Xenoblade, you get to like this massive like end game baddie, and then it's just doing the same boss scene yeah. from the Tentacle Monster ten hours in. And then Xeno Gears, you get to the end, and it's playing the same the boss theme. Yeah, right up until the very last phase of the last boss. God. I, I love read Nino that thing so much. I, I read that thing about Xeno Saga not having music, and I thought they were joking. No, <laughs> like, like there is like, like it's completely is inscrutable just, to me. It's just in t- environmental sounds for most of that game. Like Weird. the in-game dungeons, like everything is just like ambiance. Weird, because they were talking about how good the music in Xeno Saga Two is. Two, like I mean, I I made that whole mix for yeah. Xeno Saga Two, um, yeah. and Xeno Saga Three is amazing soundtrack as well. Um, yeah, they, I think they learned the lesson. I don't think that they could have gotten away doing every game in the series that way, but I think it really works for episode one. Uh, dope. Yeah, my my expectation is that I'm going to really like episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, like I I have very I have measured expectations in terms of it. Just like that st- that style of like PS2 RPG isn't necessarily my favorite. But mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to leave me pretty decently satisfied. And then I'll know that 2 is weird. And then yeah, I'll know two that is, 3 uh, will be real oh good. Oh, boy. Yes, Gameplay-wise, 2 is just kind of oof. Yeah, that's the impression I get. Doofa. Xenosaga 2, more like YouTube 2. Yeah, I did. And then I, I played it anyway. <laughs> You played it anyway. <laughs> I literally YouTube the rest of that fucking game halfway through it because I was tired of the fucking combat system being the same thing over and over. And then that's when I knew you and, can't drop a game. And then, like a day later, I just picked the fucking game back up and started playing it again. And then two days later, I'd finished it, even though I YouTube the rest of it. That's so fucking. Funny. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> God, yeah, I had to know. I had just to... like you going back and turning back to hard mode and doing the final dungeon of Trails again. Yeah, just like okay, yeah. fine. I'm gonna make sure I can do this. I'm so God. Why do I do this to myself? There was there was a an option to turn down the difficulty on boss fights in Xenoblade X. I did not make myself. Mm. I did not take advantage of it. I really was mm. tempted. You didn't turn on game journalist mode. <laughs> <laughs> Pa- Polly, I love Polly Red. I love Zeno so fucking much. I don't know how this happened. It's like That's, in the last year. Yeah, like the last year. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. I mean, that just yeah. means that means that hopefully you're gonna like three of my favorite games. I know. I'm very excited for Saga now. I'm very jazzed. I was, it was either jump into Xenoblade X or jump into Xeno Saga. Saga and I kind of wanted yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, and I kind of wanted that more gameplay yeah. focused thing. Yeah. But now I'm real pumped for Xenosaga. Cool. And that's my, that's my whole segment. 
<laughs> and I'll just yeah, be right. patiently waiting for you to play Xenoblade 2. That's that's the impression that a lot of people... I, 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 I made that joke about it's very nice that Zen, that they made four weird Xeno games and three normie ones. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can alternate and not get bored or exhausted. Um, And then a friend was like, I think Xenoblade 2 is pretty weird. And, no. and I and I wanted to kind of make I wanted to poke fun. I was like, it's in Smash Bros. Yeah, it's, it's not um, that weird. Wait, Shulk was in Smash Bros. first. That's Xenoblade is also one of the normie yeah, ones. Right? Yeah, that's also a normie <laughs> one. Like uh, that game's pretty normie. It's very it's okay. very good. I like it a lot. But yeah, that, that I was thinking that those are the terms I was thinking. Of. There are a list. There is a list of streamers that I follow, and when certain people. I watch play a game. I know that they're playing it, and it's like, okay, that's a normie game because they are they are super duper normie. <laughs> Weird. Xenoblade Two is the one that made me go, oh, this is actually just a Super Nintendo game, like reskinned in three D. Ah, uh, uh, fuck yeah. Or maybe oh, maybe a so Sega CD it. RPG. I'm glad they made. It sounds like they made the level smaller, which sounds really nice. It's way less about exploration, more like, hey, this is a pretty background. You can run around it, but, you know. Cool. Awesome. I'm here for that now. The, the, the story's over here. I am, I remember people complaining about that, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I think I've had my fill. Yeah. I don't I don't know how someone would get to the end of Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade X and then be like, I need more of that. Uh, I See, I haven't played X, but they are so comically large in They are so Xenoblade. big! I got to the end of X and I'd explored like I, I mean I got all of the towers yeah. done, but I'd still like done like twenty five percent of the stuff. <laughs> like it's absurd. Yeah. Xenoblade always felt like they made those maps and then scaled them up five hundred percent to show that you're very small. Yeah. <laughs> like some like of you're the a borrower. Yeah, no, seriously, like some in some of the like the Megatron fortresses where it's just like this is literally made for creatures that are like three times bigger than you, so so everything just feels absolutely way too large, and it takes forever to run across. It's like a fucking, it's like a normal RPG dungeon, but then every, but then yeah. they just shrink you. They shrink until you're a little mouse running around to this normal yeah. JRPG town. The whole game feels like that, but, That's but awesome. especially like the mechanical areas. When you get to the town at the top of the first mech, like, and it's just comically massive and there's yeah. like a hundred NPCs everywhere. That game's so wild. For, you know, it's so on weird. the fucking Wii, they did that. Yeah, on the, 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 Wii. It, the fact that they pulled that off on the Wii is so astonishing. That Hey, the fact that I could emulate Xenoblade, it's a 2015 game, and have it pl com play completely silky smooth, um, it feels like a testament to like the CMU developers. But it yeah. also feels like a testament to a Monolith Soft that they were that it's like the the it's completely transitionless. You just go across this whole massive oh, world. Yeah. yeah, like they pulled and that off, pulling that kind of stuff off on Nintendo hardware. Uh, yeah, on the that, Wii U. Yeah, like that's pretty crazy. Like flying across this massive map and having it be completely smooth. Like it was buck it was so amazing. Ugh. Alright, I'm done. Alright. Okay. Let us take a five minute break and we will be right back, right back, right back.
What? Sorry. What? 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 Huh? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Not a thing. Uh, reading a Ryukishio Seven interview about. Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh, he's oh. uh. <laughs> I don't know. Washing his hands. Oh, what is he? Did he just dumpster fire his own anime? I know. Huh? He I, gave a very light outline to what they were going to do for the anime. I uh, I gave him an idea, and then they took it and made a bad idea. Oh, God. This isn't live, right? We're live. Oh, okay. <laughs> I won't say. Oh, because you don't want to spoil it? I mean, I guess. I, he said something like, when I saw the storyboard for the final battle, I was very surprised. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, I, well, I'm surprised. And then, why didn't the villain apologize? Oh, there was no reason to. Well, it's adolescence. Oh, God. <laughs> I... Mm. Mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah. Oh, that show's a trash fire. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yep, I gave him an idea, and, uh, and I then looked at that final battle story, and, well, you know, they made anime. Go them. Yep. 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 Ah. John. Yep. yep. Sorry, sorry. There he is. Why you ta- what are you doing? That was literally the longest break we've had in a while. I it's rare that I actually run out of queued up songs to play during the <laughs> break, but we were dangerously close to hitting the end of the third song. Oh, shit. I was just I, sitting here in silence for most of it. Just I was too. I was just like I was just like, well, I'm gonna wait for somebody to unmute. So I finally yeah. unmuted, and then it's like, oh, John is still not back. Weird. No. I mean, TB- TBH? <laughs> My brother is being a, being really weird about li- about <laughs> liking MCU shit and was like... Oh, no. And was like actually mad at me. What? Like, he, prompt- he prompted me to... He kept prompting me. I, I made a... I shared a joke that was... I, 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 this thing that was Screen Rant article. The Green Knight proves we need a King Arthur cinematic universe. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was funny because Green Knight is like a weird art film. Yeah, yeah. And I shared that in the chat. And then he just started kind of pressing me, like, what would be bad about that? What would be bad? What would be bad about that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. And I was like, I don't... I, I, we've talked about this over and over, and it's just like he's... Fucking... It, it, I just don't like the MCU, y'all. I think that's I okay. have no interest in the MCU whatsoever. Oh so my I god, they, could, relate. they make solo movies about every night of the round table. Yeah, <laughs> Lancelot. Yeah, I don't. How about Lancelot? Tom says, "Is it? It's okay. My brother's trying to get me to watch What If. Is this like a normal thing? Does everybody just it have people feels, like what? Is everybody but, their life? There's brain worms with this shit. I swear to Christ, there has to be." something subliminal going on here because everybody I know that is on this MCU shit is on it in a way that they have to drag you into it and if you don't want to be dragged into it it becomes a fucking thing it's like a it's like we're it's like it's a problem yeah we don't like care. you are like I feel that when I say I don't care about MCU shit I'm like like that. These people are like later in a chat somewhere else going. I don't know. Polly's little problematic lately. <laughs> this is the next MCU arc. It's the brain worms that corrupt people. Watching like, TV. It literally has to be a thing because everybody I know gets so weird and fucking indignant about this stuff. If you don't care. Okay. Good. I was like, I, that's what. That's why I, my my break ran long. I was just like, what the. F- fuck is going on because i just left that one chat and i don't have time for this anymore i'm not good no thank you so that 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up. It, it feels like because it's such an investment, and I feel like there's yeah. extra. There's like some extra insecurity about this is well, this is a real cultural institution. This is important. This is this is, this is a big big deal. This you gotta is, be a part. Care. You gotta and care. So I, give it value. Come on, you giving this value gives me life, so that that I feel good about giving billionaires loads of money for this bad mediocre entertainment. Like he doesn't care about Xenoblade and how it's not a big deal. So like. I just, that's the a thing is like when people want is... me to give a shit about things like this, there's never any goddamn give either. It's like, okay, fine. Like it happened once where I played Persona 5 because somebody agreed to play through the Trails in the Sky games. They put that on themselves. They said they'd do it if I gave Persona 5 a go. But it's never the case with these people. They don't want to, they, like, man, we're going to go back to that whole indie game thing, aren't we? Where oh, indie, devs, indie devs don't want to play your indie games, but they want you to play theirs. But it's a very similar thing where people that are invested in this Marvel Comics mediocre bullshit get all pissy, but, like, they don't want to give and take. They just want to foist their bullshit mediocre entertainment on you because they don't want to be alone. And, and, and like, they, I think that they realize what they're watching is mediocre, but they're so fucking invested at this point, but they can't act or like, they can't act like they are. They have to act like they enjoy the shit being actively shoved down their fucking throats. Holly, why don't you want to join the conversation? Do I am. Do I look like I want to be a part of any conversation? Oh, okay, God. next okay. week, for next episode, we're all going to watch Squid Game. All right, let's do so it. We can be on top of things. I, I, when people kept saying Squid Game, I swear to God, I thought, well, is there like a Netflix Splatoon show now? That'd, I legit that'd probably thought, be kind of cool. Because I first saw VTubers talking about Squid Game, and I was like, they're joking. They mean Splatoon. Right, right. I legit thought, oh, they got permission to play Splatoon. Mm -hmm. I, man. Yeah. I get hot about the MCU stuff because people, like, it. JoJo and MCU stuff oh, God. in particular. Like, people JoJo. people get up my fucking entire asshole about all the time. And I'm just like, dude, I'm not there with it, okay? And you, hounding me about it, ain't helping. And then they get mad because I'm the bad person. I'm problematic. I don't like MCU. Throw me away. Throw me in the garbage. Where's the trash can? I'll insert myself into the nearest trash receptacle. Rhett! We're going oh, to was... save my next segment for last. Oh, because I see, I see. It's, it's a thing that if people don't want to hear anything, you know, we'll right, talk right. about it now. So, uh, Rhett, we'll jump to you and then... Jump. Okay. Uh, I watched more anime. <laughs> oh, I'm big surprised. Big surprise. Uh, so I briefly, very briefly, last week mentioned that I'd watched uh, Lupin the Third, the woman called Mine Fujiko, mm -hmm. and did not like it that much yeah. by the end. Yeah. So funny thing about that series, though. So that was the first Lupin TV series in about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then they did sequel movies to it that aren't connected to, like, the actual proper main timeline. Mm-hmm. So there's three movies right now. Jigen's Gravestone is the first one. I'm looking them up right now. Second one is Goemon's Spray of Blood. And then the third one is the third one is 2019. Like these are still pretty recent. Pretty recent. Yeah. I remember I remember when I looked this up, like there were only the first two. The third one is called Mine's Fujiko's Lie. Mm. And they're these like three hour long movies. Oh. And I actually like them more than the main series. That's cool. Like, I just watched all three in one night. Just like, hey, this is a thing I'm going to do. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that they're supposedly in this one timeline because I think that's really just because they are R-rated and there is still nudity and some yeah. pretty gnarly violence. But, like, the art style isn't the same. Like, the TV series has a very distinct, like, kind of shading style that they use. And they drop that and just kind of make it look a little bit more like the regular stuff. And then I th thought the stories, like these self-contained little hour episodes, were just pretty good on the whole. And there's one crazy thing. The end of the first movie ends with the tease where they reveal a character who is, like, appeared in a 1978 movie. Oh, jeez. As, like, a reveal. And it's just, like... And it's weird because it felt like a, a character I'd seen before because I think they probably 
Like, you know the children in Akira look kind of weird? Oh, yeah. I think this is the character they might have been, like, inspired by. Oh, that's crazy. So, But then, that's the first movie. He doesn't appear in the other two. Like, they are building out, like, a whole separate... Maybe they will eventually get back to that or not. Because the third movie, even though these are, like, primarily standalone, the third movie does reference the first two right. in small ways. It's funny that there's this whole separate timeline, but and now, I Jet, just Jetstorm's got a name in the chat, Mamo. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I looked yeah. it up, and it was just like, "Wow, that is a pull for sure to make in like 2015 or whenever it came out." Like the f- weird thing about the Moose movie being 2019 is that it's after parts four and five have aired on TV, mm-hmm. and part six airs like this month, I think, starting airing. And I do want to mention one thing, is that one of the characters, Jigen, has been voiced by the same guy the entire time. Yeah. 51 years. That's a... That... That's a... Re- that's gotta be a record. That might be a record. He actually did just retire, though. They yeah. did... Part 6, Episode 0 is gonna be his final episode, and that, that just came out. Yeah. I, I know that, like... Though. I know that, like, Charles Martinet got a thing for being a character long for a long time, but I think that was just video game uh, yeah. exclusive. But this dude, I think, is just literally the yeah. longest of a role has ever been filled by one single voice actor. It's cr- he hit fifty one years, like that's crazy. Yeah, like I guess at the end of that special episode, they hold up a bottle of wine. It says like vintage nineteen seventy one. Hell like, yeah, fucking, that's fucking crazy. That's wild, man. So, props to him. He was born in, like, 33. That's great. He's been voice acting for 51 years. That's so fucking wild. That's awesome. Uh, I watched another show uh-huh. besides those three movies. that I, I can't really talk about the plots of them a whole lot because, you know, it's Lupin. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of a comfort food series for me where, like, it's never great, but it's never really awesome. It's never really bad. Right. You know, <laughs> it's just very solid character archetypes. You got the thief, the samurai, and the gunslinger, and yeah. then the girl. The girl. <laughs> the girl is the, the girl. girl. That's the thing. That's why I think the Fujiko series disappointed me so much is because I wanted her to become more of a character. Than just the and, girl. And they totally don't do that. And no. she's still just, the and girl. she's the sexy one. Yeah. Like, her whole thing in the stuff that I've seen is just, and she shows her tits. Yeah. Because she's a girl. And Lupin gets horny. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I've still not seen anything that really made her an interesting or dynamic Unfortunate. Character. Yeah. Uh, I watched another show. It was called Iroduka, The World in Colors. Mm. And this will be another quick one. I finished this show and I thought, wow, that was the best 7 out of 10 I've ever seen. Oh, man. Those are always... <laughs> Man, six and seven out of ten shows yeah. are just the hardest to talk about and to like correlate thoughts that are more than yeah yeah you know that was like a an okay three and a half hours of my life. But it was so weird, specifically being like, yes, this was a very good seven. You will never touch being an eight because Ooh. there were too many problems. <laughs> like, what show is this again? Uh, Iroduka, the world in colors. Okay. It's not, I don't think it's particularly well known. It aired in 2018 and probably nobody cared. I literally um, never heard of it. Yeah. I'm looking I, at it. I've been watching anime for like a solid like two and a half months now. I'm starting to have to dig a little bit. Yeah. To I was like, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it sounds like you've kind of, you've feasted on all the good stuff. Yeah. And now you've got to kind of like run your, your I mean, bottom it, jaw along the bottom of the trash what, can. That's and, where. <laughs> That's where all these picks were coming from. Just scrape your bottom teeth along the bottom of the trash can. I mean, it is kind of satisfying looking at like my plan to watch list, and it's a bunch of uh, airing or not aired yet. And I'm right. like, yes, oh. I'm getting caught up. Freeing. Like, it's freeing. Yeah. And there's I have stuff I'm looking forward to, like Attack on Titan, like uh, you know some other shows. Mm-hmm. I think there's that Time Machine, the Tatami Galaxy sequel. Like, yes! Or that'll be something, hopefully. That'll be great, hopefully. But yeah, when I'm I'm digging back to like random rom coms from 2018, like, hmm, okay, mm. you're we are at the bottom of the barrel. We've reached it. I mean, 
definitely not bottom of the barrel. But this show was fine, but it was just like it's got a funny pre- premise where it's like there's a girl and she lives in like the year 2078. It's mm-hmm. the future, mm-hmm. and she, her grandmother is a witch and sends her back in time. Oh. And she just kind of does it without, like, warning her that she's about to do this. Is there a reason for this? It's, like, therapy, basically. But also, the grandmother meets her back in the past. Like, I think it's a whole predestination thing. It's like, well, I know that you got sent back to this time, so I'm going to have to do it 60 years in the future. So here you go. Bye. Bye. And she, So it's weird, because you've got the time travel premise mixed with a sci-fi premise at the start, and then also they're witches and no magic. But nobody else knows magic. These two. It's like, the main girl is very depressed, is basically how you could say it. She sees in black and white. Like, she has some trauma, and she just doesn't see colors in the world. Okay, it's like it's like dude from a silent voice who only sees people with X's on their face. So, something yeah. like that. And then she meets a boy who's an artist, and oh. she looks at one of the pictures he's drawing, oh, okay. and she sees colors Color in the drawing. In the oh draw. my god, I go. fucking love, I immediately like, started <laughs> whittling up, Rhett! So that's like, that's the first <laughs> episode so premise. Good. Like, when she saw color at the end of the first episode in the drawing, I, like, started crying. Oh, and my I was like, God. I was like, this show's going to be great. And then it kind of just doesn't live up to doesn't get what it could have been. Brutal. It's just, it's just way more low-key and, like, subtle about things. Mm. It never really goes for big emotional gut punches. Mm-hmm. And, like, some of the arcs just really feel like they go nowhere. Because, again... It may have worked better as a movie and not a 13-episode TV yeah. series because then they start introducing a whole bunch of other characters and they've all got their own problems and just feels like it really it gets to be distracted. A theme here. Yeah. Yeah. It really kind of got distracted from that main arc of this, the boy and the girl. Like, there's a whole side plot where, like, this other cool boy has a crush on the main girl and he confesses and she shuts him down. And then... The girl who has a crush on him is like, oh, I'm, I'm mad about and s- sad about everything. And they she reconciles with the main character. And then she never actually confesses to the cool boy. Huh. She's just like, I'm just fine with how things are now. And it's just like... <laughs> it's I mean, so there's nothing un- wrong with that. I mean, that's a totally fine way. That's a totally fine conclusion to arrive at. But, it, but in terms still, of drama and, like, being yeah. a rom-com, it just kind of, like, falls a little flat and a little too grounded for what it, these things typically are. I know. I think that's maybe the biggest problem is that it ends up being a lot of it is a little too grounded for a premise that is time travel and science yeah. and magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, that there's feels so much, like you could do so much with this. There's so much fantasy and anime right at the start than having a character arc end with, I'm not going to confess because I'm still scared of rejection. And then she just ends the show still pining for him. And it's just, okay, that kind of just went truly nowhere. We're in a circle. Rhett, let me help you. I'm going to do do me a favor. Okay? Go watch Toradora. You want a good rom-com? Yes! Go watch a good fucking rom-com. Seriously. Oh, have you not seen Toradora, Rhett? I dropped Toradora. (laughs) You what? I dropped it. Oh, I, it's so good, Rat. Yeah, you well, like fine. even even I'm the one that'll be like, look, that like I I am somebody that was dead set against never watching that show and hating it. Yeah. Somebody somebody people are fucking weird and they spite buy things for you. <laughs> I got that for Christmas one year. Somebody spite oh. bought it for me. And then I was like, fine, fuck it, I'll watch it. And literally in tears by the end. Like, yeah, this oh. is actually really good. Fuck. <laughs> I can't deny this because, like, I was just like, I don't care about a show where the main girl is just gonna be a fucking tsundere and beat up the boy. But that's actually not Same. like this show has that. Like Toradora has that. I won't fucking say that it doesn't. But the main girl there's, is there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on with this okay. with these two characters and the way they kind of just get sort of pulled toward one another. That's actually really genuine and sweet. Mm. 
Yeah, if you like Familiar of Zero, I feel like Torador is a way is like an even more fleshed out version. Of it. <laughs> what if I don't like Familiar of Zero? Is the uh, problem? Uh, oh, I think it's better uh, than Familiar of Zero. <laughs> Oh, for it sure. is. Of I would say it's sure. better than. Sure. I would say it's better than the familiar of Zero anime. I think maybe that was what pushed me away. Is like, oh, this feels like the same character. At the it's start. the same VA. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah. she voiced every Sundere from like she 2004 to 2012. Yeah, because <laughs> she's also the main girl in Hayate the Combat yep. Butler, which yep. I. But she's not a, like a really a romance in that, which kept it. She's just a bitch. Yeah. And she's like way mellower in that one compared to like Louise. Louise is like a ten, and everything else is kind of shades lighter than Louise. Torador is like a seven. Torador yeah. is like she has seven to ten moments, uh, but she's actually really not that bad. Okay. <laughs> like uh, they they get a lot of it front loaded, but you start seeing a change in these characters as it goes, mm -hmm. and it's actually very very genuine. I think. Hmm. Yeah. See, yeah, I, I was like, I can think so back to moments in that series still, and I've not seen it in a long ass time. That's still mm. just like, oh god, that still hits me really hard. The fucking mm. yeah, the mountain retreat, just oh, <laughs> oh, the skiing trip, yeah, that that oh god, yep, it, yep. I'm not gonna watch it right away, but I will put it back on the plan to watch list. Like, give it, a, give it a shot. Like, it sounds like you need some need need to need some filling in, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> unless you don't want to have any more anime to watch, unless you want to just just be like, okay, there's nothing else. Oh no, there's there's always more anime to watch. Yeah. And I know that that one is very very well regarded. Yeah. I just got really put off by the first couple episodes. It's understandable. Like I said, she's they front load a lot mean. of that. She's really mean at the start. Yeah. But it's a very very like okay, look, we get, you got through Nagatoro, right? Yeah. And she's kind of yeah, like you're she right. was kind of really awful those first couple episodes. <laughs> Yeah, you mean the best part? The best <laughs> before, it, before it got boring. Wow. <laughs> the thing that was funny with Nagatoro for me was like I was completely fine with the first few episodes and the bullying, and then once it became like the blonde girl, I was like not okay with it anymore. <laughs> I that how she reacts too. She's like, yeah, no, no, she's mine. But yeah. there's scenes with, like, the three other friends all bullying him at the same time, and I'm just... That's when I was like, oh, this is this is more uncomfortable. There's no playfulness now. Now they're just actually being mean. Yeah, but, like, they actually come around. Like that, They do, but at the very start, I was like... Like, when you uh -oh. got them, they're, they're, they're very much... Like, like I think that those two friends act... Those two friends actually end up being characters I really enjoyed. By the there's end. the one with the huge shit-eating grin. Like, yes, perpetually. she's so good! <laughs> I really hated her for the start. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, like, again, like, they start out coming from a place of, like, not understanding Nagatoro's bullying this kid because she likes yeah. him. Yeah. Like, they don't mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. So I think that, like, yeah, give Toradora another chance. Give it some time. Let it let it get into its groove after a few mm -hmm. episodes uh, mm -hmm. because it really does go to a really sweet place. Okay. And then, like, and also, like, shift your perspective and recognize that her being really mean to him at the start is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and you should actually really like that, too. Okay. <laughs> Look, just watch the show, all. pretend you're John for a few episodes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being facetious. That's obviously okay that you don't. But that's not your thing. But it did make me laugh a lot. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were going to talk about this show, and then, oh, we barely still talked about the show. <laughs> yeah. Just got hijacked by Tori. We talked about Tori. Well, that's okay. Tor I think we turned it into a much things. better conversation. No, for sure. But that's that kind of says it all about the show. Yeah. Like, like, I kept we, waiting for, like... We, we the, turned to something else. <laughs> I... Oh, God. They put, like, the main relationship between the two leads on such back burner... That it doesn't really come up again till like the last episode, right. and I'm just that like, feels terrible. Come on, oh, there's a thing they set up that they don't pay off in the last oh. episode that I was really frustrated by. Ah. Like, I'm so I'm such a mark, okay, with emotional, emotionally manipulative stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, I could see the ways in which this show, if it just went for it, could make me sob super easily. 
and they just don't go for like any of the low hanging fruit. Aww, like you don't have to do much to get Rhett. You don't. And they just like, again the first episode. As soon as she saw color in his in the boy's drawing, <laughs> I was like so in tears in my eye. Let's go. And they just don't capitalize on it at all. Gura, I just saw color for the first time. Let's fucking go. <laughs> It's an okay show. It just feels like it could have been more my thing by going a little more anime with it. Yeah, and I'm just saying, why eat Steakums when you can go have a nice big 16-ounce porterhouse? Fine. There you go. <laughs> I like Steakums, by the way. I'm not going to throw I'm not throwing dirt at Steakums, yeah. but if you give me the option of a nice big steak, guess who's eating a big nice steak? Not Rhett cuz he's vegetarian. I'll eat it for him. I'm like, that's the weirdest, worst comparison. <laughs> Look, what a, a nice, juicy uh, salad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nice. Imagine a nice, juicy salad. The biggest, juiciest salad. That's Toradora. Perfect. Yeah. Just like just like a bunch of ranch and like ranch and like... Um, no, not ranch. Get that shit out of here. Oh oh my I, meant to, I meant to say ranch. I'm so sorry. <laughs> A lot of ranch and then like bacon and baked chicken on top and just nope. like a real good oh, like nope. Cobb salad. I hate oh. ranch so much. You hate ranch? I hate it. Like there's a oh, whole they, like there are a number of jokes in Poly Dungeon about how much I hate ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, can like I do berries or ranch? Yes, you can. You can. Ranch. Can I do one more real Absolutely. quick? This, this Absolutely. one. <laughs> I'm it. so sorry. This one's going to hurt you a little bit. I watched Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, Solid State Society. It's probably not going to hurt me very much. because I, I didn't, didn't really like yeah. it at all. I didn't have a super high opinion of that movie. Okay. I, I mean, I, I probably gave it like a 7 or 8 on yeah. MAL. I think, you, I think it's an 8. but uh, as like It's just an extended episode of the show that yeah. mm-hmm. it's not super satisfying. It doesn't have as much time to wind up. Uh, you know, the way, like, it, it, yeah. I think the story of the PS2 game was better. Yeah, had mind <laughs> control, right? <laughs> what was the, so there was the PS1 game and the PS2 game. Which was the one you really connected with? I like the PS1 game. Like, the PS2 game is just like, they just, re- they just reskinned Oni. If you ever played that game, that oh, was like gotcha. a first gen PS2 game called Oni. That, that standalone complex game. Uh, on PS2 is just a reskinned version of that. I'm very oh. convinced. The PS1 game is super interesting. It's it is a very that's, interesting that's the one with like the wall climbing. Yeah, right? it's the one with like okay. you're 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 a Fuchikoma and you drive around and, <laughs> and, and you like crawl on walls and shit. It's wild. For PS1, yeah, that's yeah, it's a pretty it's pretty a great vicious. game. I love that game. Huh. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I don't have really anything else to say about the movie. There's very little action in yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's it is a Talking Heads movie. It's, it's very a much Ghost Heads in the, movie. It's very much yeah. Ghost in the Shell to Innocence, except Ghost uh, in the Shell. Except Ghost in the Shell to Innocence is very pretty. Like at least oh, you, that's... at least you have those pretty backgrounds and stuff to look at in Ghost in the Shell Innocence. Whereas mm. like Solid State Society is just very drab and look, it's a bunch of talking and uh, some very sterile backgrounds. Definitely a whole lot of. I don't feel like I have a full grasp of what's going on the it's, entire time. Yeah, it's it requires kind of a, a a watch or two to kind of really get it. And even <laughs> then, I don't think it's that great of a story. Yeah, that's the, that's the real problem. Is I'm not sure there's much payoff to. Nah, nah. It, it, it got the, it got the bump to eight for me just because it gets that ghost in the shell bump. But <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I I plan on watching the original movie at some point. That original movie. So, Don't watch the 2.0 version. I think I have the original. Because they did a version where they like they reanimated a bunch of scenes with CG and they're yeah. fucking dreadful. I mean, if I see CG, I'll know. Yeah, Oops, like abort, one. abort, abort. Get that fucking shit out. Of it's garbage. Uh, that movie's they, real pretty. That movie's they, great. Yeah, they took a real pretty movie and they fucking and special they made editioned it. it. Fucking ugly. All right, is that is okay. that is that That's anime a, anime adventure? Yeah, I mean, now. All right, John. What else you got? 
Uh, I just read a bunch more Konosuba. <laughs> ah, good, good. <laughs> a whole bunch. A whole f- Dude, how- you've read, what, 15 fucking light novels since the last episode or something? I have read seven Konosubas total. That is no. a lot of Konosubas. It's very good. I started another light novel because I was waiting for my more Konosubas to arrive, and then the seven <laughs> remaining ones arrived, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll finish this God. first volume, and then I'll read the, all the other. Kon- mm-hmm. I have I have the rest of Konosuba now. Not is that like the, all of it? Is it done? There's three more volumes that are released in um, Japan but aren't localized here yet. They're on a schedule. They're going to come out. Good. Um, Good. But if I, if I get to the end and they're not out yet, I'll probably just... Um, there are fan translations online and uh, I'll just buy them as they come out. Like I'm not sure whether um, I should just buy them or borrow them from you at this point because I, like Konosu- <laughs> I like Konosuba a lot. So I feel just like I think I'd probably feel good investing in that. Well, if I if I um yeah, I mean I'll be I'll be here to inform you all how it pays off because like I'm very pleased with how it's progressing right now. Nice. Um, I feel like the first four volumes, which comprise the first two seasons, are a lot more like kind of all right. Here are some adventures. Here are some hijinks that we all get up to. Yeah. Um, and then sort of starting with volume five, they get a little bit more like, well, volume five is the movie. It's the Megamine volume. Yeah, like this is the this is the one where it, this is largely about like Cosma and Megamine and yeah. their and them and their relationship and it has a really sweet payoff at the end. Yeah, like they where, even captured where, that in the movie very well. Like you definitely got yep. the sense that these are characters that are actually growing uh, together mm-hmm. in a way that's a little more intimate than things may have started. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, like the the moment of like just. Put put the skill points to advance magic, Cosma. Man, a that card. actually fucking got me in a way that I was not <laughs> expecting. Like I completely I forgotten it, and I read the book, and I got me at the end of the book I too. Could not believe that this fucking comedy anime like actually get hit me with the like hit me in the heart with a left hook right there. Like, God damn it. Yep. Yep. Um, and then they continue that because yeah. volume six is. The Princess Iris volume. Oh, we all don't know yet. Ah, volume seven is the dark is a darkness volume. Oh dear, mm-hmm. <laughs> your crops are flourishing. <laughs> your crops are flourishing. Um, so I I was like I'll just say, broad strokes here, like I want to know what is Konosuba? How do they will they handle the princess of the whole country? Because mm-hmm. I was like. Well, they have the the magician who can only use explosion, <laughs> and they have the crusader that's mass super masochistic and can't attack. So what? And they have the useless goddess. What is the princess going to be? Yeah, the answer is that she is just the sweetest cinnamon roll possible. Oh. <laughs> Knowing this series, my immediate reaction to that is then, and then they all corrupt her. <laughs> like that would that's like sort the of. obvious like how do you not go that route i mean sort of in like a very but like in a cute way where it's like where it's like somebody who has li- lived a sheltered noble life and is curious about the world outside and then gets to know about that stuff through Kazuma. yeah like <laughs> good 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 filter to learn about the world through Everybody else is just like, oh my god, this fuck, this fucker, <laughs> this 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 idiot is just is just like you said, is just like corrupting her. Yep. Just like just like t- tell me more adventure, t- tell me more stories about your adventures. Well, this one time, and then <laughs> it's very good, and the yeah. relationship is very sweet, and then it it continues a very something it's very good at. I think is that it's very good about building up. Cosma, and he'll do something cool, <laughs> and then he'll get a really big head about yes! it. Yes, and then he'll come slamming back down to earth. <laughs> I love that Shoot about like earth. I love that about the show as well. Like it always happens. Like 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 they give him the moment, but like he runs way too far with it. You play with <laughs> fire, you get burned. Like it it's refreshing. Mm-hmm. There's just like there's like uh, multiple things where he's like ex- there like there's just a hard cut where he is boasting about an extremely cool brave thing he's about to do to all the nobles, 
hard cut next chapter he's dead <laughs> talking to Eris. <laughs> oh no <laughs> Wait, waiting to be resurrected <laughs> and it's just like perfect it's just like mm. that's so good and then when he and then he does and then he, then he rounds out the vo- the volume with like doing some really cool shit but in such a way that he cannot benefit from it at all <laughs> so it's like yes this is perfect I I, I feel like I, I feel like the series is like constantly playing with this this um, balance where they're like kind of sincerely leaning into like harem stuff essentially yeah, harem dynamics obviously. yeah and sincerely leaning into and then this self insert boy does a bunch of cool shit mm-hmm. and then undercutting it with a joke or like yeah. undercutting like they'll build up a very dramatic moment and then like perfectly undercut it with a joke like. In, in the first season when Darkness takes the curse spell <laughs> Megamine and is doomed to die in seven days and, and is like tearfully everybody's like crying and then Aqua just swoops and sacred dispel it's and it's gone <laughs> like all of that like shit like, like that series is so fucking brilliantly written it feels like yeah mm-hmm. there's there's multiple moments like that in volume six and seven which are the ones I've watched read that aren't animated mm-hmm. and the darkness volume just cops flourishing. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. There you go. I love her so much. <laughs> um, I think the really interesting thing they do with darkness, especially is like the way they develop their dynamic, like Cosma and darkness throughout. There's always like, a line they're paying attention at least later on like i know there's some issues early on oh yeah yeah, yeah um, when yeah. the dynamic wasn't maybe necessarily hammered out yeah where they're like kind of always playing with this line between like fun distress and then okay but actually don't shack stop yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm not and i don't necessarily think it's like perfect with how it handles it but the way that it, it kind of juggles that mm-hmm. and the way that um, the drama in the in the seventh book plays with darkness like, no, I actually don't like the situation. <laughs> would like to be out of it. And then and then the whole party party helping her in a really Aww. sweet way. Um, and like people just getting her and loving her <laughs> for who she is. And I mean, that's ultimately a lot of what that show's about is like everybody kind of oh. being these imperfect kind of people and then like learning to kind of just get along with and love them anyway. I feel like that's constantly there. I feel like you even get that in the show where these kind of misfits kind of band together because, you know, not just out of the sheer fact because they're all assholes and, you know, they're all really <laughs> just big, gigantic idiots. But it's uh, like they've also got their own weird little hang-ups you kind of learn to just get over. They feel like there's a positive message there somewhere. It's really, like, I think the, I think putting the skill points into explosion is sort of like that big moment there. Yeah. Just like, Hey, we love you for you. Be you dog. Please, please just be you. That's all we want. Yep. And I absolutely see that in the, in the subsequent volumes. And I'm really excited to see how the larger story kind of progresses. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I, I think this transition into like sort of a little, like a little bit more character drama, but like still always undercut with a joke. Yeah. Um, they it just, it's making me really happy. They're, they're, they're so like pick up and readable. I chewed through the, the darkness volume in a day. I would say yeah, it sounded like it. Yeah. Like they're just, mm, they're, it's, it's almost like not that much longer than just watching like the equivalent animated chunk of the show. Oh, that's rad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm really loving this, and I have all the rest of them at my fingertips. So I'm probably gonna, I might just keep reading. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I why not? You're on the journey. Might as well take mm-hmm. it. Um, I, I started reading. I started reading one more. Um, just empty box in the zero with Maria. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll follow up on that. But like the 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 one thing there that I like is that it is just like pure visual novel cadence oh, to the writing. Good, good. Or it's like good present tense, like the way the way just the way it's written. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I I remember making a joke at some point where I was like googling books as good as Higarashi. 
<laughs> and it turns out the true bookstore he they were so that's been very that's you been robot very it nice. real hard there and i didn't yeah. any of it the, um the, the true books were the the well i was looking for book googling books as good as higurashi and then it turns out they were here this whole time uh, just waiting for me <laughs> so light not the light novel journey continues i also have um the first ggo volume on my shelf oh nice um, mm-hmm. i'm pretty i'm i'm I feel I don't know. I feel it's it's a kind of media excitement I haven't felt in a bit, where it feels like a whole world is kind of opening up to me <laughs> uh, in a very in an exciting way. It's not so video game. It's not watching something. You're feeding your brain with words. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's literature, man. Don't worry about it. It's good. There you go. <laughs> Everybody's like, people play video games. They don't read enough. Well, you solve that. Absolutely, I, I I got through the rest of my Goodreads challenge very quick. Yeah, I was through there. seven volumes of Kanasuba. <laughs> I was Believe wondering about that. I'm yeah. like, I knew okay, most of that was books. probably Kanasuba. <laughs> twelve book challenge, you just read twelve volumes of Kanasuba. Yeah, yeah, I might be. I, I had um twenty four as my goal for a couple years, and then I went to down to twelve for twenty twenty. I like cut it in half in twenty twenty. Be nice to yourself. One, I was like, yeah, let's keep it at twelve. But did you even hit 12 last year? I did hit 12 last year. Okay. Um, God, was there was there something? There, ha- I bet there was a cheat. There's some kind of cheat to that. <laughs> Let me check. Oh, yeah, I read five Darth Vader volumes. Oh, now, my like, God. Yelling, yelling comic at the start. But, yep, that's that's it. That's my, All right. that's my current media journey. All right. Probably. Well, there's, well, there's a big one. Big. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. We're not gonna like spoiler cast anything here, so no. we have um, we haven't finished the game. We so. haven't finished the game, but I understand that if you don't want to hear about it right now, if you don't want to hear anything about Metroid Dread right now, um, we'll give you a chance to oh, go I'm ahead out. And, and all right, see you later, John. We'll give everybody <laughs> a chance to parachute on out of here safely. Deploy your parachutes, and we hope you land safely. Uh, we hope there are no EMMIs where you land, because, man, good luck on those QTEs, my dude. you done. That's all I'm saying. All right. So, man, Metroid Red. Uh, man, that's a... Oh, boy. Um, hey, Rhett, where... Uh, you just recently started... Like, when, you I don't know this where last to start night. either. Yeah. Like, look, it's a fucking Metroid game. Uh, and, and the yeah. setup, and, and dread is the setup. Like literally, the whole point of this game is that you're you're the hunted, uh, kind of, not in very specific areas. In very very specific, <laughs> like that's kind of like the, the 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 deal here. The how they have to kind of make this work. This is like not like a, a Resident Evil two thing where you know Mister X can kind of just follow you all around the police station. Yeah. It's more mm-hmm. like there are designated EMI zones. And you kind of just have to wiggle your way in throughout. You kind of have to thread the needle into these, in and out yeah. of these zones as you kind of work around the facility to get your, your powers back. Uh, you basically, you, you, you get to this new place and uh, because Samus has kind of been sent, yo, dog, we got X. We found him. You remember the X from Metroid Fusion, the game <laughs> that nobody remembered existed oh. when this game got announced? The fact that this game has to start with a very detailed recap it, of Metroid Fusion. My god, yeah, they do a ba- like an entire recap of Metroid Fusion up front. Like, like in visual novel scene- format here with Samus narrating. Like, it's yo, okay, we- Metroid Fusion starts with a five minute visual novel. Not but I'm pretty like- sure like some of the drawings in this feel like like rescaled up not rescaled like redrawn hd versions of like samus getting her new suit in that game yeah like like, it's really paying homage to it yeah like they're leaning into like look this is actually metroid 5 which is weird because i don't think that they actually flash metroid 5 put it in the game like Like, that bothered me because like (laughs) every other metroid does it and they did not put metroid 5 at the start of this i saw people like legit mad about that like my biggest flaw is they didn't put metroid 5 like i wanted that in in the reveal trailer yeah, they did it in the reveal trailer, but I wanted it in the game, and I was real mad when they didn't do it. So yeah, it's Count so in. cool in Fusion when it just says Metroid. Metroid Four. 4. That's the first thing you see when it loads up. Metroid Three is the first thing you see when Super Metroid loads up. Mm. So yeah, the fact that they didn't do it, but yeah, she gets Catch it, Nintendo. 
she gets a uh, a, a video that like there's X out in the wild again, and like those were supposed to be no. those were supposed to be completely exterminated by the end. Yeah, she blew up a whole planet yeah. to do it. <laughs> but she ends up getting video of one out in the wild, so she goes to this planet. She lands, and some shit happens, and she wakes up, and she's lost all of her shit, and like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? And uh, you don't know what happened, but you know that you got to go. Yeah. You got to do the Metroid thing. You've got to go get all your powers back, and it's, you know, you, you do the Metroid thing. But like, basically, <laughs> the big deal of this game is the EMMIs, which are indestructible yeah. robots that will hunt you down mercilessly. Uh, they're capable of one hit killing you once they got you. Um, they can sense you. Uh, the way they chase you through. Uh, these areas, is very, it seems very dynamic. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to spoil the magic, you know, because I, I kind of know how they work now. Um, but, like, when you see them kind of crawling through vents and pushing themselves through tiny little holes, or, like, and they've got this big cone of vision they use to detect you. Um, so, so, like, basically it's like, you go into an EMMI zone, and they will be somewhere pre-generated, um, and that sometimes changes and sometimes it doesn't. And they'll be patrolling in the area trying to find you. And then you've got to thread the needle to the next area you've got to get. But if they find you, you go into alert mode and the exits to the EMMI zones get shut down. <laughs> so you've got to hide. And they give you a number of ways to avoid detection. And, and like, to be honest, it's actually pretty generous with, like, once they've kind of spotted you. Because you are still very mobile in this game. Uh, Samus is very fast. You're so fast in this game. Like, everything about this game is unbelievably fast. Uh, like, I yeah. thought that Zero Mission was super fast and, and almost to the point of feeling kind of jittery and, uh, and uh, a little um, start and stoppy. This is kind of like Zero Mission if it was a bit smoother and had a little more gravity to it. Or, or maybe a little less gravity, because I think she's a little floatier now uh, than Zero mm -hmm. Mission, but... Um, but yeah, like a lot of this game is really just kind of centered on that whole idea of these indestructible enemies that can kill you. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about them a bit. You can kill them. Uh, the game has yeah. a very scripted way for you to kill them, uh, which is a little silly, but they had to, they had to think of something, I guess. They got like this aim mode, like you, you, you find an Omega cannon and then you have to shoot him in the face with it. To like to, to heat up the faceplate, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. Um, and then yeah, you... the first time the tutorial for that, I was like, "What? What? Because you don't have to do the very first one. You don't have, have to it. do it to the first one because he's like already damaged for some reason. Yeah, and then the rest. Yeah, and then the rest. So you have to melt the faceplate off, and you have to do so by like going into this third person aiming mode where you're in like the. Like, it switches from 2D to a 3D sort of view. It's kind of like, you know, Guilty Gear, the newer Guilty Gear games, when they do, like, the specials and this camera will kind of swing around? Yeah. It kind of does, a, like, a 45-degree angle, so you can actually see for further forward than you normally could from yeah. a 2D view. Yeah. It's and really it, cool. It's actually I a cool say. thing. It feels really weird aiming it at first. You can't just, like, up and down aim. You have to hold the direction that she's aiming. So if you're looking right or left, you have to, like, first hold right or left. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go up and down while constantly holding that direction because you can't just, like, up and down. Like, that's why I was confused for, like, two minutes oh. trying to figure out the aiming. Break, I just instinctively just pointed the analog stick. Oh, I, see, it. I was just like trying to aim it up and down, but it's like that's just the sharp angle. So it was just like up, down, up, down. Like, <laughs> how the fuck do I do this? Sam and fuck, Sam is fucking blast this thing into the ceiling. Oh shit! I only had one shot. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Feels good. Um, but uh, I mean, it's just so far. Like I'm like uh, six and a half, seven hours in, and yeah. like, look, it's it's a good one of these. Like I don't know that. Like, like, you're never going to get another Super Metroid or anything, like, yeah, specific like that. And, like, Metroid games don't... Like, like, despite the fact that they have a lot of things that are in common with one another, it's still a series where every game is still pretty wildly different. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that this game is what it is, I, like, I don't look at it as, like, oh, it's not like Metroid 3. It's not like Fusion. Like, it's its own it sounds thing. Like, it sounds like it is a lot like Fusion. In yeah, of, in like, a lot like, of ways, spicy it set is. pieces. It, and, and, or, and, not spicy. Um, the the chase sequence set pieces. 
Yeah. The set pieces are, are like, 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 if you don't, like, think about how they're working and you don't kind of watch the patterns and you don't drill it into your head, the magic probably won't be a little lost for you. Uh, but mm-hmm. I just kind of, like, I kind of watched how those things play out and how they chase you and how it determines what it's going to do, and I kind of think I've got it mostly downloaded. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I've still got a bit to go, and I've still got a couple remaining, so we'll see. Um, I definitely had a moment of, like... He's near the exit I want to go to, so I went to one corner mm-hmm. and just started shooting. Like I'm over here, I'm over here, over and then, kinda and then hop down, jump up, go. I, for me, it was specifically like jump up, take the long route around, mm-hmm. get to the exit. It was like, oh, that felt pretty cool. Yeah, like, like the, it does. It feels really good getting out of these rooms. Yeah, the chases and fusion were like very scripted. Oh and set yeah, PC, mm-hmm. where this is like it actually is like genuinely dynamic to a yeah. point. Yeah, there is a chase. You have to get away. Um, but yeah, the only way you kill them is that like you get this specific weapon. There's basically yeah, a cutscene weapon. Cheesy. Uh, you get the Omega Cannon, uh, <laughs> and you have to like go into that side aiming mode thing, and you have to aim up and down, and you have to like shoot it with a stream of energy until its faceplate <laughs> melts off, and then you have to charge the weapon and then blow his head off. I think the point there is like it is still tense when this thing that can yeah, really kill like, you is coming at you. Yeah, like it still to, lunges like, at it's still lurching at you really slowly, yeah. but it's just like, oh god, come on. Fucking charge faster, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like having to do two shots I get because yeah. it's a little stressful, like, oh god, he's he's getting really yeah, close. I like <laughs> that idea. I like that idea a lot. Uh, I wish the controllers were the controls were a little more yeah. elegant because I don't understand why I have to hold L to be in my aim mode. I have to hold R to charge the weapon, and then it's I have goofy. to pre- and then I have to press Y to fire. Why can't I just release R to fire? It would, that's how every other charge attack in the game works. Yeah, <laughs> because at that point you don't even have like there's no confusion because you wouldn't even be using like the the energy spray anymore because you don't need to melt the faceplate off. Uh, but if they catch you, unfortunately, oh boy, <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. Like there's a, there are, there, there, like there, there's a cutscene that will play where the game. I'm just gonna say it. I, the game actively lies to you uh, and tells mm-hmm. you that there's a chance to avoid this, but I think it's just bullshit because it's inconsistent <laughs> in how countering works with everything else. Because there, everything else in the game has a melee counter. Like a, a lot of enemies that attack you melee, you have a melee counter. And they indicate to you when they're going to attack. So you you do it. There's a flash. And then you attack with your melee attack. Boom. You counter the enemy. It's, it feels real good when you do that. Um, Ollie, I, Ollie hmm? I promise you the counter on them is real. <laughs> they give you two chances. I know. I know. Rhett, I've played <laughs> this game a lot. Trust me. I know. And I've hit it a few times. But okay. okay. here's the thing. Here's the thing. The way the game presents this is when you see the flash, you press the button. That is not how it works. It's really, you have to feel it and you just have press to. before you see it. And the problem is, there, they are, the time. there are four animations, two left and two right, depending on which side you get caught. And both animations have a point at which the thing will flash to indicate, supposedly, when you're supposed to press the button. And it's wrong. It's wrong every time. Uh, but the issue that with this is not the fact that the QTE is wrong. It is that they every time that cutscene loads, the window with which you have to press the, the counter button actually changes every time. <laughs> so it's not consistent. They present it to you. They present it to the player as something that you can learn so that if you mess up, it's your fault. But what they do not tell you is that the timing changes every single time. And I feel that that is, that is bad game design. That is like when you actively lie to the player and you put something on them that's really not on them. I think that like that is, that is not good. And like I don't enjoy anything about like, like I, I, I just wish that if an, with, I just wish that an, when an Emmy, Emmy caught you. Just, just kill me. I don't care. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? Yes, I've stunned it every now and again. The success rate is about, like, 5%. Because you can't know. You don't know where the, where the window is going to be, and it's literally only two or three frames. 
Like, I've had moments where it would catch me, I would miss the first one, and then the second one is when it opens his faceplate and sticks the uh, the spike in you. Yeah. I have had the I have had <laughs> Sounds great. I have had moments where like the mask would literally be halfway open and the spike would already be out. So the timings are fucking they're wrong. They're either wrong or it's just like this isn't something you're meant to actually do. I mean, th- okay, can I can I offer a counter here? Absolutely. You can offer a counter. <laughs> when the, when the game tells you about this, they literally describe it as absolute last ditch effort you're basically dead like they say it's extremely difficult to do i get it but i like the, it's the it's the they, moving they, the time it's the moving the window for me like it can they like just, if they wanted it to be frame perfect i would take that if you want one fucking frame to hit this fine mm-hmm. don't but fucking change, but change the, it, yeah. don't change the window that's where it's really unfair i think the wording is like they say extremely difficult to pull off. Yes, they Absolutely. like they basically say a lot of times like, look, like encountering these things is ninety nine percent death. You're done. Yeah. Like I so get it. You're it's hitting. Fine. You're hitting those odds. I. It's. I, it's just a way that it's presented, and they act like it's a thing mm-hmm. that like if you miss that timing window, it's your fault. When it's there's literally no uh, way you can know. Like that's my problem. Like the game, you are literally lying to me and saying that this is something that I could cons- feasibly consistently do. When it's not. But other than that, it's fine. Yeah, that I like, sense. like, <laughs> I, yeah. I kind of wish they just did a shitload of damage and let you go, like, have a cutscene where Samus is able to get away. Yeah. Because yeah. I think the instant kills just kind of, it having messes. it be an instant kill and then having to have checkpoints constantly yeah. when yeah. you go into the zones yeah. kind of reduces the dread, I think. Yeah, it really does. It, it, it takes away the dread. Uh, it kills the pacing. Uh, like, if you yeah. kind of get into a particular... Like, if you get a particularly bad spawn... Like, I've had I've had them appear just, like, right when I go in the door and they immediately yeah. spot me. I was like, boy, that just feels real bad because there's not mm-hmm. a lot I can do in that situation. Um, so it's not a perfect system. Uh, I don't think that the, the the QTE stuff is bad enough that it ruins the game. Uh, it's the part of the game that I dislike the most, however. Um, I have a feeling it doesn't come up for the final boss simply because I saw somebody say they beat the game without ever doing it right once. Oh, yeah. I, I like Somebody told me that like the countering like, that does come up late in the game is just normal enemy countering, which I yeah. can do very consistently. It's really forgiving. <laughs> I, it's not as forgiving as like fucking other M's dodging. I mean, okay, where you that's can literally not... just tap the button for two hundred minutes before the enemy attacks, and you'll still dodge. The dodging in that game is literally like yeah, hundred percent because you could just spam any direction, yeah, any direction. Yeah, you didn't have to matter about timing or direction. Just press the D pad, and you'll win. Yeah. You'll dodge. Yeah, the parry in this game feels really good, and there's not like there's not a bunch of enemies that really require it or need it. It's mostly just bigger enemies or smaller like enemies that kind of like. Like, like zoomers and shit that kind of like just fly zoomers. in at you. They just fly in at you really quick. Or gamers. I think they're called gamers. They like fly in at you and you just like. What's up, gamers? What's up, gamers? <laughs> you give you give them an old uppercut backward and it feels really good because you just like you get an instant counter attack on that and just like yeah. put a bunch of fucking damage into that. You can do that to a lot of bosses too, uh, and that feels real good when you fucking mm. when, when you uh, when you hard parry a boss. Um, nice. And you get to like dump like fifteen extra missiles into it. Uh, but yeah, like I'm about six and a half, seven hours in. I had an extraordinarily awful crash this morning. Ugh. So I, you're five hours in now. I lost two major upgrades and a bu- and a bunch of small upgrades uh, because Ugh. this game does an other M thing that I don't like. It arbitrarily seals doors sometimes because I think they just didn't know how to keep the player from sequence breaking the game. So they just arbitrarily turn some doors into doors that are like, so you like, oh, I want to go back to the safe point since I did some, oh, everything's fucking locked off. Great. So, so I was going, so I was going to grab one other power up. Um, I was doing some shine spark shenanigans. Uh, And I was going back and forth between these two rooms really quickly. And then the game goes, I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to go back to the Wii. uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, Switch main menu now. 
<laughs> you you, t- you ran back to the Wii. <laughs> yeah, it literally threw me into the Wii main menu for some reason. <laughs> it loaded up my Wii, and for some reason Metroid Other M was in there. Oh, God. It felt real bad, man. I felt like the game, yeah, that was, that's and, the real dread. then Samus destroyed it with the Omega Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> And that's actually the climax of the game. Is they're just wild, destroying man. it with destroying Metroid Other M. It's yeah, wild. like the last boss is literally just a packaged copy of Other M. Just a big, I mean, that, a big dumb Wii box. That game also had you changing camera angles to fire missiles. Oh god! Like the last, the last thing you do in Other M is literally point the point at the screen and press a button. That's your final boss. You literally just point at the girl and press a button. You point at the girl. Mother. Mother. God. Other M. Let's have let... need te- Sector Zero. Oh, God! Oh, it's all coming back to me. Oh. Just don't acknowledge that game anymore. Yeah, yeah. We just do not talk about it. Like, uh, when I was talking about the games to you guys earlier, I was like, oh, yeah, the GBA. GBA games were a while ago. Yeah, and I, I did, and I didn't play Samus Returns, mm-hmm. and I just memory hole other M. Like no, I'm yeah. not going to even mention it. I love the fact that we both still have positive reviews of other M on my website. However, fucking oh my god, it's just it's that it's that, like it's look, a, it's at a, the time it's, it's literally just um man I'm so happy to have a Metroid game to play. I'm not gonna think yeah. about it. That's literally all it was. Yep, Man. we got also, zeitgeisted also, also, so hard. Also, I was sixteen. You were sixteen. <laughs> you have be a fair. much better excuse than I do. <laughs> you were my age. Yeah, I mean, John. What did you know? John wasn't even born when Fusion came out. Oh my god! <laughs> I think Polly had a second where she was like, maybe. maybe. No, no. Was it? what? Was yeah. he? Yeah. Was he? I fucking love Fusion and Zero Mission as a kid. They're really their, good. I think they're played, still really good. Like a dozen times I played each. Fusion. Yeah. I played Fusion like two months ago. It was a rad ass oh. time. Nice. I had a very good time replaying that video game. I'm just waiting. I want you all to finish it and then tell me if it, tell me if it held, basically holds basically. I think it it's, I think I think you're probably fine. Like I I've seen I don't very see good impressions. I don't see anything at this point. Like, and I've got, like, most of my suit upgrades, so I have to assume I'm close to the end of the game. Like, the game would have to massively fumble to make me really resent, like, the, the time that I've yeah. already spent in this game. I think you're fine. Like, I think this is going to be okay. Okay. Cool. I, I liked when you, I liked when I said, like, my expectations are not like, oh, this is going to live up to the grand legacy of no. Super Metroid no, or whatnot. No, no. I just want a good video game. That's all. It's not even like I'm, I just want a good video game. It's like I just want like a nice, fun corp game that holds together. Like I, I, I think I brought up as a comparison point. I was thinking like Sonic Colors, Mega Man Eleven, yeah. and Shantae Pirates Cruise. Yeah. This that game like, doesn't really feel corp at all, though. Is the thing. It feels this game feels like it was. Uh, it began life as a downloadable game mm-hmm. uh, because its presentation cool. is very like it, it, it. I'm not saying it's budgety. But I'm saying that, like, a lot of this game just doesn't feel... Like, there's not a lot of tutorializing. This game is not hand-holdy. Uh, I still not, felt there was way too much tutorializing for a Metroid game. It's not waypointy. Like, there are... Like, they will put, yeah. like... They will put, like, the... Like, the, 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 the... I think the one major thing that they'll put on the map is sometimes they'll put, like, sphere upgrades to tell you... But they don't tell you how to get there. Yeah. They'll just be like, here's an upgrade here. Here's where you'll get the Omega Cannon. Uh... It is very hands off. Yeah, yeah, it's very hands off, and the map is very... less, substantially less hands off than Fusion and Zero Mission. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. absolutely. For yeah. sure, you still got to hit like uh, navigation points to talk to Adam and stuff, but it's not like mm-hmm. he's not telling you step by step what to do. How's Adam in this one? I I'm mean, curious. He's, he's just a text to speech guy. Cool. I was joking with Polly earlier. They have found the best way ever to make a game that is fully voiced by having one character be text to speech. And Samus doesn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious to me that, like, th- like Adam is talking to her in the opening cutscene. And, like, you're waiting for the moment where she's going to respond because Other M already made that precedent. But she's just nope. sitting there gesturing at, at control panels and stuff. And he's nothing. Nothing. 
Does she get an internal monologue like in Fusion and Zero Mission? She has like the 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 opening narration is text. uh, It's just a bunch of text, and it's from her point of view, but she's not saying it. It's not voice. Amazing, perfect. I think after other M, they're never going to let her voice talk again. You're done. I think that like Poncho uh, Poncho also said a point like Dread actually makes me want to go back and check out Samus Returns. So I was like, I will probably actually pick that up at some point because one, I like Metroid two. Uh, despite the fact that I know they did a real dumb thing with it. Oh, it, it, oh, it just boss. makes me angry. I, I, uh, I think my deal with Samus Returns is like, if I have a good time with this, then I, I'm i just, I'd be interested in what their Metroid flavor is. Not yeah. so much thinking about, because yeah. I don't see Zero Mission as being like the update of no, the, the no, original it's a Metroid. Different They're thing. completely different yeah. games. Yeah. Like, they really I'm, are. I enjoy that NES game, and I enjoy Zero Mission for two different reasons. Yeah, and, and I... If Samus Returns is close to that, I yeah. think that could be f- Metroid. Like Metroid Two is like my favorite. It's like it, yeah. it inspired a ton of my work. It's like one of my favorite yeah yeah game stories. But I uh, just like we did our thing. We did our we did our did our little twist on. We did our little um dumb 3ds metroid oh yeah thing. like i love that we even had we even did like the the number thing where like when you when you when you kiss a boy like the number cycles and then it settles again <laughs> on the next number yep yep yeah. oh my god that I was like how, like that, that was literally metroid like that, that was literally our homage to uh metroid 2 that's amazing. operation atb yes that game Fugitive. was literally designed with metroid 2 in mind Fugitive pulls from Metroid 2 constantly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Sure. Into the Vortex started off with Hey, remember at the end of Metroid 2 when you get swallowed by yeah. the final boss? Yeah. And then honestly, I think Facets is sort of the same vibe, too. We're going deep into the. There's a lot of Metroid deep, 2 deep, deep DNA. into the level, There's counting of... down as you kill the enemies. Oh, oh, right. Metroid. I really a lot of Metroid. like Metroid 2. Yeah, a lot of Metroid 2 DNA in the John Thire catalog. Yep. Seven Facets remain. Yeah. <laughs> Should have had the timer in the corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Seven. so, like, like cool. where are you at, Rhett? Because I know, like, I kind of feel that I'm probably okay. I'm probably going to really enjoy this by the end. Like, yeah. do you have any other thoughts? I mean, my thoughts are, I think it's good. I don't have really any issues with it. But, like, if you start comparing it to, like, Hollow Knight. Oh, know, yeah. Like, which I'm not. Come up That's short. why. I'm, yeah. like, I'm just, like, I'm playing this as its own thing. It's just like, yeah. look, I'm just playing a, a game that is called Metroid, that I'm still doing Metroid-y type things. I just might yeah. not be doing them in the same way that has been... Pre- like, look, other people have kind of taken this genre and done better things with it. It's mm-hmm. okay that if Metroid's not going to be l- like like Metroid 2 again. It's fine. Yeah. There are other games I, think... I can get that from now. Yep, there's tons and tons and tons of games yeah. where you can get the vibe we want. Yep. Like, this is just, like, like I said, like... The, the the Mega Man Eleven the Shantae thing are I'm just like yeah. I have I there's a thing that I can really appreciate there's a specific type ty- type of like sort of big studio mm-hmm. but retro style game that I can just kind of have a good time with yeah and I think that's plenty okay. to ex- that's all I expect okay can I say my thing now yep <laughs> oh, yes right I th- I think there's just the game is so fast yeah. and like it's not just that it's really fast it's that that affects the map design so much. Yeah. We're like, I just have moments where like, I'm going through a new area for a while. And then I look at the map and it's just this. It's huge. It's this absolutely massive serpentine mess of nonsense. But like when you, when you start running back through it, it doesn't, you don't feel that at all. Kind of. I think, it feels maybe a little too large at times. There's times for me where, like, once you've cleared out the Emmy zone and have to kind of use that as the what, what, to get to other areas yeah. and aspirants, yeah. which generally have more, it feels a bit like fillers area. It can because the thing yeah. with the Emmys is the Emmy zones is that they don't really have enemies in them because you're focused on yeah they can't the really the pursuit. Like they have There's little, not... they have like little annoying enemies that get in the way from time to time, yeah. but you can easily just dash past yeah. them. But then once you kill the Emmy, there's actually more enemies. Yeah, then they spawn in new enemies. Just to make them not completely empty. Yeah, that but would I be think, a bit... Yeah, if they had just left those rooms empty, that yeah. would have been a bad decision. That'd be really bad. And I get why they're like that, because running through normal areas while being chased 
would have been a nightmare to design, even though it would have been kind of cool. It would have been really cool, but it, it's Maybe not the, something they could have done in the, on this kind on of a scope game of skip, a game. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like, you know how we kind of rag on the Castlevania 3D games? Not 3D, the the explory ones. Yeah, yeah. Having really boring room design. Yeah. Like, this is like so extremely in the opposite direction. Yeah. Where the room design is so complex and spirally and winding. It's really and... intricate. Yeah. In a way that I wasn't expecting because, like, when I started seeing, you know, when you started seeing videos and pictures of that game, yeah. it looked like it was going to just be very boxy, very boring. Because... But, like, these rooms are very well. Like, there's a lot of love and care putting into, put into the design yeah. of these rooms. Because I think the stuff they were showing a lot early was the Emmy Zone, which is the more boxy, open areas because you have to have the room to navigate around these yeah. enemies that, that can one hit kill you yeah and they're it's big really, they're big yeah. so i just think like i can't i keep going back to hollow knight where like <laughs> i mean it's the very easy to do that yeah. yeah because the movement in that game is slower mm -hmm. each room can be a lot more deliberately paced and yeah. then become and then each room can kind of stick in your memory a bit more, and it's easier to map yeah. out everything in your head. Yeah, everything zooms by in this game, and it's both Every a cool thing and to its detriment, I suppose. Yeah, because I just have moments where I'm just like, okay, where do I actually go next? And then I open the map, and oh my god. And the fact that the map shows, like, every single actual grid yeah. is just kind of overwhelming. It's way too specific. Like, Samus is, like, two blocks high and one block wide. So... <laughs> yeah. When you hit an area on the map, it highlights the exact positions you hit. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, you're going to need the space jump to actually 100% the map. Yeah. Because, like, every single goddamn room in this game, the ceiling is grayed out because I can't get up there. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that they actually, like, I don't, I don't think they track that at all. So I know, but just looking at the map, it drives me nuts like I've been in this room. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Just, like, because every single room is, like, two-toned because of that. It just, it's a minor annoyance. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they put, like, you have no options on the map besides highlight one thing at a time. Yeah. And it'll it'll show, like, all collected upgrades. Yeah, like, though. it is a cool thing where you can be, like, like, like you can hover over, like, the missile tank icon and, like, you only highlight missile tank icons and it'll, like, it'll like take the contrast mm. down a little bit on the map and it'll pop out all of the the, the missile packs that you've seen that yeah. you haven't collected yet and you can like you know, I think that's a cool feature it's just the yeah. map's not the map maybe is not robust enough yeah i just wish you could hide like hide you know the door icons for yeah the else. door icons are a bit much i don't know why they needed those there's the map is so detailed like there's like literally no data that isn't, isn't transcribed on the, map, on the map yeah because it is just the actual grid data and the actual door type data yeah and like if you hit if you shoot a wall a missile at a wall and it reveals like a special block it'll catalog that block on the thing yeah like that, the, the, the one thing that i don't like is like when you you destroy like a missile door but like the missile yeah. door icon will still stay on like yeah. it, it just feels like needless clutter sometimes yeah and I just think, like, the speed of the game makes combat maybe a little harder than it could be. Oh, yeah, the and combat is, like, like, normal combat is still pretty hard. Like, this is very, yeah. it's just about as hard as Fusion could get. Uh, and enemies mm -hmm. hit, like, a fucking truck. In Fusion? Yeah. yeah. No, they hit, like, a truck in this game, oh, too. They yes. yes! And you have significantly less health in this game than you do in that game. I think Ooh. I've got, I think I've got, like, seven E-Tanks. Hmm. It seems like this one is a good. If you are a fan of fusion, yeah, I it think seems like that, it actually follows yeah. up. I, I, maybe it follows up on the things that are actually like cool about fusion. I, I'm pretty confident you will like this game. Cool. I, I mean, the concept for this game was done around then, where yeah. they talked about Project Dread in like yeah, nine, like this two, is a I game think. that they've wanted to make for a long time uh, and never had the technology. Like... So. I think they straight up said this is version three. Like, yep, this is the third time this game version. has been made. So interesting, That's crazy. Cool. I I couldn't imagine this is a DS one. No, game, it never would have worked. Yeah, but yeah, like I, I I'm I'm having a good time. I don't see yeah. that changing too much. Nope. Um, but yeah. 
Maybe after maybe after I've read a few more light novels. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the thing about Samus Returns that kind of kept me off it is like I think they leaned into the counter melee stuff way more for regular enemies. Yeah, I see that a lot in the video. It just seems like you could just kind of run through and punch everything, which seems a very weird to- tone for Metroid 2 to end up having. Yeah, like Samus just running around uppercutting things. I'm here for it. Don't get me wrong, but it is definitely a weird tone for Metroid. <laughs> It really, it really feels better having this be a new thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Remake. Yeah, I'm so happy that this is a new thing and that it's yeah. like it's forging forward on a vision that was really strong. That like I like that when you heard about back in the day sounded really cool, and then they finally were able to deliver on it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here for it. Like I'm, I'm happy with this game so far. Really am. Cool. Yeah, and that's it so nice because ha- this could have been a disaster. It really could have been, and I think yeah. a lot of people were expecting it. To, like when I first like like I was watching people react to this game announcement. Like so, like I was watching other people kind of react when things were being announced. So like the first thing that happened was like, oh, it's Mercury Steam that's developing it. Like, oh, great, this is going to be terrible because like a bunch of people didn't like. Uh, um, Samus Returns, or they they don't like it because it was on the 3DS, so it's going to be bad for some reason. You know, like, that's kind of like... Th- there was definitely reason... Or, or pe- or people had definitely invented reasons to be mad about this game being what it was and being developed by who it was being developed by. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah. It could have gone it absolutely is, <laughs> terribly. It's very funny that it basically seems like they kind of had Castlevania to test run, and yeah. then they got Metroid and then started... and then got their act together. Yeah. Yeah. If that's kind of the arc, that's very funny to me. Yeah, that seems about <laughs> the size of it, honestly. <laughs> that's fine, because Castlevania was always worse. Yeah, absolutely. As far absolutely. as exploring, you are as far not as exploring wrong. games go. You are not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts about Metroid Dread? Because I think that's a show. Yeah. I think that's a show. That's a show! We did it! We survived somehow. We made it to the end. We're all in one piece. Somehow, don't know how. Like with all the buzz saws that were running around in the studio today, I don't know how we made it, but we made it. We did good. I'm proud of us. We're gonna pat us on the back, not too hard. You might break your spine. All right, all right. So John Thire, tell the pretty internet folks at home where they can find you. Faraway.times.itch.io and Rhett, where can the internet folks find you? watching anime yeah (laughs) probably that's what you're gonna be doing but yeah thanks everybody for coming out it's been an absolute blast as always and we'll catch you again in another couple weeks probably and remember we are the podcast that loves you we're the only ones that love you bye bye all right let's find somebody to host and get on out of here because i'm hungry i'm hungry too bye I'm, i'm so well i'm not I've not signed off yet, Rhett. You can't leave we yet. Just said, you can't we just leave yet. The episode. You can't leave yet, ep- Rhett. You can't here. leave. You can't leave until I host, Rhett. That's that's the tradition. You Watch me. Me. Oh wow! Look at this guy. He that holy man. shit! He did it. He, motherfucker literally has the balls to leave my stream. <laughs> this motherfucker! I can't believe it. Twenty years I'm of kinda, friendship, kinda, and this is what I get. I'm kind of proud. You are. Kind of proud. I feel like that stat maybe means something. You think that's you think that's praiseable? Fine, I'll leave the call too. All right, thanks everybody uh, for coming out once again. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the who's streaming right now, and I don't know. I don't know that anybody's streaming. That I yeah, my host is looking pretty thin tonight. My lord, ain't nobody streaming nothing, is there? Uh. Maybe I'll just let the auto host take care of things. That's probably fine. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you later, folks. Uh, I'll catch you next time. I'm going to just let the auto host pick somebody. Take it easy, everybody. Much love. Bye.